know this too. You should um, even I know it, and I wasn't even that big of a fan of the show. Tank, isn't it tanks plural? But close that, enough. Yeah, it's definitely close enough. Well, we're back, and I apologize. It was 100% my fault that we're late to streaming. I had delicious lamb tikka masala. Ooh, and that does sound good. Got caught up uh, in the moment. Yeah. But we're it's been here a long now. Time since I've had tikka masala. It sounds really good. It was good. And uh, so, hey, Robert, check out how cool our stream looks now with all of our gizmos and gadgets. Yeah, I'll pull it up on the uh, old PlayStation 4 here. I think it usually takes a second before it's up on yeah. the PlayStation, but That's once fine. it's up, I'll pull it up. Oh man, Angriest Pat is streaming again. Ugh! He's always on, so when I'm streaming, he so I never He was probably get inspired by your raid. To stream some more. That's my guess. That makes perfect sense. But, all right. So, for this episode of OK Podcast with Bad People, we're talking about, for the movie half, Blade it's Runner. Waiting. Yeah. And then for the video game half, our. Oh, the audio must have cut out. Oh, no. Okay. I don't know if it was just like my hearing you that cut out or if it was on the stream. Uh, well, I think it was just you, because you also froze for a second. Okay, well, that seems probable then. And for the video game part, we are discussing our most controversial opinions in gaming. And Indeed. We run out, because I, I honestly don't have that many, but <laughs> we'll find some. I know, I, I had a hard time too, but I, as usual, put together at least a decent list. So, But uh, before we get too into it, I want to thank... Uh, some people we got another sub from oh T wow tussling walnut so we're almost halfway to our goal and well then, thank uh, you walnut of tussling and uh one mr l stysic drop mad bits and we have the little yeah. the bit jar set up over on the corner there so yeah when are we gonna uh debag that cat <laughs> I, th I think it'll be more fun when everyone everyone figures it out and posts in the chat. Okay. Like, look at these idiots. They think they're so clever. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, let that cat fester in there. I mean, the cat technically was booted wholeheartedly out of the bag the first time. Yeah, by Will a certain streaming. William. But, all right, let's get into it. So this was your first time seeing Blade Runner, correct? Yeah. And yeah, uh, which version did you watch? So I watched the final cut. Okay. I did like a lot of, or at least a fair amount of reading about like, well, cause I, when I went to look on Amazon, they had three different versions. So I'm like, which of these should I watch? And then I went and did some reading and came to the conclusion that the final cut was probably what I would like the most and <laughs> what would maybe reflect most closely the director's vision. So that makes sense. Are, are we just telling everyone our name? Cause Screen names because like Robert. Oh, sorry, Fabulous Al Riot is in the chat. Okay, cause... I'm still. I'm the PlayStation's having a hard time pulling it up. Weird. Is... So I can't see it yet. Because Robert's screen name, he has he has multiple aliases. Whereas I am always a dead man, and William is always Fabulous Al Riot. Yeah. But Robert is a man of many faces and names. Oh no, that's true. The Illuminati. Our, uh, our people conspiracy theorying in our chat. The, no, the just tussling walnut just put the Illuminati uh, triangle. I still well, it's true. We work for the Illuminati, or specifically, I do. That it, I, That's why I, I don't talk it. about my work much. See, I don't know how to make people VIPs. Hmm. But anyway, we keep talking about anything. I'm going to look that up really quick. Okay, now I got the stream open. That's look good. So now we have a lot less dead space, and then up in the top right will be the announcement thing if anyone follows or subs that way. Excellent. Use all the realty. So if anyone subs or drops bits during this stream, they'll fall in this little Plinko cup over here. Yeah. That's fun. Do they get a bonus of some sort if their bits land in the cup? Uh, we can write them a poem. 
Okay. It's gonna turn out they land in the cup every time, and we're just gonna be writing a shitload of poems. Then we'll get really lyrical, and it'll be awesome. Yeah. Cause yeah, like right now we should I should have ten we should those channels should have ten VIPs that we can give out. Hmm. Well, we'll figure it out. That's true. Hmm. I th I think what it is is I can't give you VIP because you're already a moderator. Yeah, that makes sense. Because you already have the roles. Yeah, I I have the special status, so I don't need it. Anyway. Redundant special status. So I'd give it to Dervik if he gets on. Yeah. For him being an infinite champion. But I just need to figure <laughs> out how to do it. But, so you watch the final cut. Yes. And uh, what would you think overall of the movie? I loved it. I, I would say there's one scene that I really did not like, but the rest of it I absolutely loved. So Nice. Well, I'm glad I could also pick a winner, but it's I didn't really have to work that hard. It's a movie that basically everyone loves, so Yeah, that was that was it was genuinely better than I thought it would be. And I you know, it's a sort of mythical movie in a lot of ways. It's what a lot of people oh, Fabius Alright hasn't seen it. That's well there will be spoilers. Oh shit, I need to put that in the thing. So that way, no one's like, oh, you didn't say spoilers. Yeah. But uh, before we get into analysis, we'll just talk about, because it might be like, Final Cut, Director's Cut, what's all this malarkey? Is uh, It is a movie with, I would say, a more above average amount of cuts. Yeah. I can't, let me move the camera down a little bit. So I'm a little more in frame. I can't think of another movie that has so many. There's at least, I think you, I think you'd be like seven. I think there's seven of them. Yeah, seven is correct. But there's really only three that you can watch now. There's the 1982 version, which was like the theatrical release. I think yep. it was 1998 was the director's cut. And then 2007 was the final cut, which is where Ridley Scott, the director, had like total control. Yeah. So it's even more than the director's cut. So yeah, I think with the director's cut he actually had like someone else had done the cut they were just kind of under his supervision but mm -hmm. he was working on another movie at the time um and so that. he just didn't feel like he could focus on it enough makes sense but there are between because i i'd realized doing this that i'd never seen the 1982 version it sounds like it's pretty different in a lot of ways uh, I would say there's like three big differences because I yeah. after I had seen it because I went and rewatched the director's cut again and then I was looking up like well what's the difference between the director's cut and final cut there's a whole bunch of video essays about well what, how are these different than the 1982 version is like the 1982 version opens up with uh like you know it has like the shot of the city and then like it cuts down to Decker and he's like in the like slum of it getting noodles and stuff is that where it starts i was i don't think that's where the final cut started i was Maybe pretty positive it starts with like with the flyover and you see like the big woman's face like in the side of the maybe i think maybe my mind is going crazy but i think the opening scene in the final cut was the void comp test with um Oh, what's his name? Oh, I don't remember Leon? that being the opening because he's my favorite replicant. Because the are you talking about where she's having where she he's having the Voight comp test with the lady? A lady? No. Or no are no, you no, talking no, about no. the one where it's he's like watching it where it's like Leon? It's uh, yeah, Leon's. Uh, I no, that happens no, like I'm minutes and mind. minutes into the movie. But anyway, it okay. opens up. The, okay. Sorry. Well, wasn't. Did the version that you watched have the, like, scrolling text start? Maybe. Okay. Because the differences between the director's cut and the final cut are not very much. Yeah. There's, like, two small changes, but the big thing is the final cut has a lot more, like, touching up. 
Like, mm. there's, like, a green, metal green haze over the whole film to make it look more cyberpunk, which a lot of people really like. Yeah. But, like, the 1982 version opens up when it's showing, like, Decker down, like, in the street. Because normally there's no voiceover. It's just kind of the camera follows him around and it's really moody and stuff. Is Decker is narrating. Yeah. And he's like, they don't say that we're killers, but that's what we are. I, in my version, uh, he's voiced also by Jimmy Stewart. Seems fair. And it's really weird. Like, I had never seen that, because I know for a fact, like, when I started, when I watched the movie years ago in college, there was no voiceover. Hmm. And then the other big thing, spoilers for the very end of the movie, is how the movie ends is drastically different between the 1982 and then the director and final cut. Yeah, I'd heard that the studios kind of demanded on a happy ending for the original theatrical release, right? Exactly. It's an ending that, like, wouldn't... Like, it's... The ending of that cannot canonically, I believe, be the ending that can exist for... Not Cyberpunk 2077. For Blade Runner 2049 to work. Hmm. Because the ending of the versions we saw is... He just gets... Is her name Rachel? What was her name? I think it is Rachel, yeah. Okay, he grabs Rachel, and then, like, they go into the elevator, and the door just shuts. So it's very ambiguous, like, what's going to happen to them... Yeah. In the theatrical release, it then cuts to them driving through the countryside with this like nice music, and Decker's like, the doctors said that I how uh, that Rachel wasn't going to die in a few weeks because she was a different kind of replicant, so we could live together and hug and kiss all the time. And they never found us. It was the best. Goodbye. That sounds awful. Yep. Uh, yeah, that's the, like, the big point. Some people were like, oh. And Ridley Scott was like, I didn't like that. Yeah. So, the the further cuts feel a lot more grown up. Like, they feel, they feel more modern to me because they're dark and ambiguous. Yeah. But alright, that's kind of the basic overview of what we're talking about when we say different cuts. So I might have some different stuff than what Robert says, so maybe there's cut stuff that we don't have. So you were saying there's a scene you didn't like. What was that scene? Okay, so the scene that I didn't like is the one where he um, like coerces Rachel into having sex with him. At least that's how it read to me. Where he's like talking with her and she gets up to leave his apartment. And he forcibly and kisses her. And he goes her. over... Yeah, he, like, slams the door so she can't get out and then, like, pushes her back and, like, tells her to tell him to kiss him and then does that and, like, tells her to tell him that she loves him. Like, that just was so gross and creepy and weird to me. Okay, yeah, I know what scene you're talking about. That is a scene from, like, I've seen stuff on it. It's a scene that plays very poorly today. Yeah. Well, that was my, that was like my thought about it was like, this is a scene that I feel like I've seen other movies do this exact same scene from like kind of that same era where it's like the implication of the scene, I think is supposed to be that she hasn't made her mind up. And so she needs a big, strong man to like help her realize what she already wants. But like, that's just really fucking gross to me. I don't know. From what I understand, what I have heard, and I, I'm not going to attribute this to anyone in case I'm wrong. And like, I don't know why I'd ever come back to being like, no, he said what I said was stupid. Is it's not so much the big strong man thing. It's more that at that time, because it really plays into, from what I understand, like the the last line you hear in the movie is. It's a shame she's not going to live, but then again, who does? Hmm. Is, like, her lifespan is really short. Yeah. By this point, they've already, like, killed some replicants, and the replicants are like, we're going to be dying soon, and they're freaking out. And Decker knows she's a replicant. I don't think she has, like, accepted the fact she's a replicant at that point yet, right? Yeah. Is... Well, yeah. Is it's Decker... 
like sort of forcing her to have like a big life experience so that way she has something before she dies but it's it's done in a weird way that like now it's like uh, but yeah that is what i have heard it's a it's a thing that doesn't and it's also sort of like decker might not exactly see her as a human at that time it's a weird scene i can't i'm not trying i won't defend it be like yeah it works perfectly it's yeah i don't think it was supposed to come off so rapey yeah no i definitely agree like that is not what the movie was trying to do it just like is what the optics of it are today Mm -hmm. and i don't know for me that's uh, it was a little difficult to get past like I would love it if we had a movie buff easy. person to be like, well, this. <laughs> but yeah, I because the scene where he like pushes her against the wall and kisses her, like I've that's like a famous kissing scene. Yeah. Yeah, I don't remember them. I I don't remember them having sex. Well, I so they don't have sex, but I, I guess it was sort of implied to me because then when Decker comes back to her later, she's like naked in the bed. Or at least I assumed she was naked in the bed. She's like in his bed and the way that he approaches her, it kind of read to me like the implication was that they had had sex because it's the first time he comes back to her after that scene that they'd had sex. And then he went off to go face down the final replicants. And then he like comes back to her. Okay, because, yeah, I, and I, kind of, I don't remember them kissing, like, doing the thing of, like, where they kiss against the wall, and then they tumble around the room and end up in the bed. There wasn't a shot like that, so I was like, I don't yeah, remember sex. It, that's definitely me, like, reading into what I because felt like the movie was t- implying happened next, but... Because, to me, and this might be weird, white male whatever is forcing, doing a forced kiss is a lot different than forced sex. So, but yeah, the, the, there's so I, many things from some like street streetcar named is well, actually streetcar named desire goes into the sex, but I don't know like just the sporadic force of the moment kiss thing is that happens. In it's a, lot a of thing sin. from another era, yeah, yeah. But, but anyway, so that's yeah. I mean, like, like I definitely get that historical element of it. I just. I think as like a modern movie viewing audience, it's important to at the very least like acknowledge like we've grown some as a society. <laughs> mm-hmm. It and makes me like, really want to see the sequel just to see what is going on with. Yeah, uh, I wanted to watch it, but the only times I had to watch it were while the stream was on, so I watched the stream instead. Thanks, man. Yeah. But, uh, all right, so we've gotten over the rumpy bumps, so what were yep. some of the things you really liked about the movie? Oh, man, like, almost everything else. <laughs> I really, really loved this movie. Um, partial... Oh, yeah, so, like, first off, I'm really curious how the special effects would have looked in the other cuts, because they all looked fucking fantastic in the cut that I watched. Uh, like, there's a huge difference with some of the okay. scenes like the scene at the end where he releases the pigeon and it flies up into the sky the final cut version it's like it's flying up into like a ruined cyberscape yeah it looks like it's just flying over a walmart in the old version like it's there's not enough building so it just flies up into a blue sky and it's just like okay gotcha okay it was, it was well, weird yeah i was thinking about it because like it it occurred to me that like in the in the final cut literally all of the special effects look fantastic and i was thinking about it comparing it to um what's the other movie we watched tom cruise one minority report minority report which had like some good special effects but also some like not great ones and that came out in 2003 so i was sitting there thinking like man if these special effects all looked this good in like the 80s that's incredible uh minority report uh came out in 2001 and was released to the public in 2002 robert can't okay we can't be wrong all right all right i mean i i feel like i was close yeah but a year in technology can be a big thing 
That's true. That's a very fair point. But anyway, yeah. Like, from um, I didn't watch the final cut, but when I was watching stuff, I was like, wow, that looks way better. Yeah, it, it the... looked great. Um, so that, I really love the aesthetic of the movie on the whole, though. Like, I think the only other Ridley Scott movie that I've seen is Alien, but, like, seeing the way that he composed shots in this and how, like, all of the shots have so many interesting things to look at. Like, it's just a feast for the eyes, and I really want to watch more of his movies now just to see if he, like, continues even just that, you know? Mm -hmm. Oh, he's the producer on these. I was like, where is he a director? Was he not the director of this movie? No, he was. Sorry, because I was... Oh, wait, no, he wasn't. Does it have... Because it has him listed as the producer of Blade Runner, but he's also the director. Yeah. Is another really good movie of his that I really like is Gladiator. Oh, excuse me. Uh, I haven't seen The Martian, but I've heard The Martian is also really good, just like visually. <laughs> there we go. It's... Oh, he also did uh, the 1984 Apple Macintosh commercial. Ooh. Have you seen oh, that okay. one? Okay, yeah, I know that one. It's the like, a... famous one that they parodied on Futurama. Uh, I didn't watch enough Futurama to know, but it's like the one where everyone's sitting there and then sh a lady runs up and like shot puts a big window. Yep. 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 Yeah, I don't know if I've actually watched all of it, but I at least like know what it is. Oh, so, wow. He's, he's done a written. lot of movies that I've seen. Yeah? Uh, yeah, he's done uh, Thelma and Louise. That's on my list of things to see. That is... Uh, it's not a bad movie, it's just depressing. Uh, G.I. Jane, which is alright. Uh, Gladiator. Oh, he did Hannibal? Hannibal's really good. Hmm. Uh, Kingdom of Heaven is... I don't know if that movie's good, but I remember really liking it. Huh. Like, have you ever seen that movie? Uh-uh. It's a it's stars Orlando Bloom, and it's another, like, historical fiction thing, but it's during the Crusades. Yeah. And it's about, like, the siege of this city, and it's really intense. At least I remember it being that way. Hmm. Uh, he did American Gangster. That was really good. He did the terrible Robin Hood movie with Kurt Russell. Not Kurt Russell. Russell Crowe. Oh, did you not see Prometheus? I saw Prometheus. Okay. I liked Prometheus a lot. I know everyone hates on it, but <laughs> yes. I liked it a lot. Because uh, yeah, I that... thought it, yeah. But yeah. Oh, he also did Exodus: Gods and Kings. Oh wait, have I seen that one? No, I have not seen that one. I was thinking of the Mo the Noah movie. Uh, and then he has another movie coming out called Death on the Nile. But hmm. yeah, I think Ridley Scott is a rather talented movie person. Yeah. Most of the time. I also just want to go and watch Alien again now. I have not seen Alien. Really? Yes. That's kind of crazy to me. I've seen like bits of it, and I like yeah. it's a movie that like I basically had told to me through culture before I ever saw it, so I've just never really felt the need to see it. Yeah. And it's something that has been pinned down and had bits ripped off of it for so long that like, like you're oh, worried if you watch it you'll just be like I've already seen all the pieces of this in various places because we were watching something it's like what you said when we were watching something you're like I've just seen it done yeah. what was that I think it was Minority Report where I was like I've seen so many movies that had taken ideas from it and kind of like stood on its shoulders mm -hmm. and so it's like kind of hard to go back to where it came from so yeah that's for that because i've seen most of aliens yeah i mean they're very different movies oh yeah like one is yeah. a horror and the other one's like an action movie yeah and then i have not watched aliens 3 on purpose that's fair i like aliens 3 i don't yeah. think it's a great movie but i like it and then i didn't watch aliens covenant because i just don't well, care. there's also a resurrection. That Wait, was, it goes three and then the resurrection. One. I thought, yeah. Oh, I thought it was Aliens. Covenant. I think is the new one. Yeah, right? which I haven't seen that one. Okay, I thought it was Aliens it was big three resurrection. I didn't know there was another one. Oh no no no! Aliens. 
All right. Uh, so Aliens 3 is debatable. A lot of people think it's really bad. It's definitely not like the best one. Um, What's the one was where she's on like the David weird Fincher. moon prison or whatever? Where That's she... 3. It, 3 is the one on the moon prison. And it was just like a weird direction for the series. Um, because like the first movie is a horror. The second movie is an action. So it's kind of like ramping up. And they were trying to bring it back to horror for the third one. Hmm. It was directed by David Fincher, but apparently there was, like, a lot of studio interference going on. Um, and so, like, I think it could have been a much cooler movie if he'd gotten to make the version he wanted to. Gotcha. Although, supposedly, he did a later cut called The Assembly Cut, which I haven't seen. But some people say The Assembly Cut is a much better version of it. Huh. Well, Fabulous Out, right? has a question he says which he says well two he says is aliens three not good and then well we always will why don't i say will <laughs> will is a uh, one more uh bag cat yep well yep. like we've seen they've seen him play games and they know he's fabulous now right yeah uh which one is best um man i i don't think i <laughs> don't bag cat I... me <laughs> I don't think I could pick between one and two. They're just like, they're really different movies, and I like them both a lot. Like, one is a really, really quiet, atmospheric yeah. horror movie with some really cool sci fi ideas, and two is like a great action movie. Yeah, like two was. I think I like two more because I'm more into action than horror because horror doesn't really. When it's horror that I can only look at, it doesn't really do anything for me. Yeah. But when it's a horror game where I get to do stuff, then... <laughs> what about the AVP movies? <laughs> we are getting way away from Blade Runner. <laughs> they're bad. They're bad. They're... They're, I liked the first one. It's a fun, stupid movie, but they're bad. It doesn't have the best line in the Alien slash Predator uh, shared movie universe, though. That comes from Predators 2. Oh yeah, nice. Yeah, and that it's is been a long time since I saw Predator too. Where uh, is that one just called Predators? I don't. It's the one with Danny Glover in it. Yeah, correct. And it's like your move, pussy face. <laughs> That's like <laughs> it's just Danny Glover saying it's that. Pretty, just like, oh. pretty great line. Well, segue wise, speaking of great lines. Blade Runner had some great lines. I like yep, way. I'm sure I'm trying yep. to think of some off the top of my head aside from the the most famous lines that come from uh Roy Beatty's character at the very end. Yeah, that's that is That was that was like the big one I was thinking of. I I don't know, do you count the Void Comp test as lines because I really enjoyed I yeah, you I said... guess like what makes it good is the performances of the people who are being tested, but like I forget how like good of an actor is Harrison Ford is in this movie. Really? I see to I I I felt like he was one of the least compelling characters in this movie. I guess I would say he's good at playing Decker. Yeah. I guess, like, the way that Decker is is so, like, kind of stony-faced mm -hmm. that, I don't know, I feel like that's just sort of the character that Harrison Ford plays. He seems like one of those actors who just plays himself, and he's, like, a stern, stony-faced guy, so you put him in that role and he does a good job. Uh, what I was going to say is, like, his earlier roles, he is not a stern, stony-faced guy. Hmm. like Indiana Jones earlier Indiana Jones and then uh, wow my goodness Star Trek it's not Star, Star Trek Wars. Star Wars Han Solo is goofy suave man and I was like you're such a dork Han Solo But it, I guess that's true I've never actually seen the Indiana Jones movies so I don't have that God damn it. cultural touchstone you and I know right you're not missing anything with the last one. The newest one sucked. Yeah. But yeah, the early ones are great. But it has aliens, so how can it be bad? You, you say these things and they hurt. 
I know, but, but I'm uh, sorry. Yeah, I'm going to say some more things that hurt later. Oh, no. Yeah, I definitely agree of all of them. I, I guess the way I was saying that, like, Harrison Ford in that movie is not, like, the soul of that movie. It was just... I always kind of think of Harrison Ford as, like, the goofy grandpa. Yeah. And this time it was, like, he fit into the cyberpunkness but no mm-hmm. like i think roy Beatty is a much inter- his i forget who his actor is he's a very famous actor yeah he felt like a little big to me my i really loved the way that the guy who played leon did it though um uh, yeah rudker Hauer. i really Leon, I thought, was all right. I don't dislike that, him. Leon, I think, is what, like... Because that, that first scene where he's getting Void comp tested... Mm-hmm. Like, the way that he acts in that scene... And, I mean, maybe it's more writing than acting. Like, I don't know where that line is, you know? But, like, the choices that get made where he... He, like, seems so unlike a robot character, you know? Like... And that's the point, of course, is that you're not really supposed... It's supposed to be really difficult to tell the difference between the um, replicants and actual humans. Mm -hmm. But I I felt like there was a quality that he brought to the Voight comp test where, like, he seems so human, and yet there's something almost, like, impossible to figure out what it is that just feels off. And, like, doing that seems like it had to have been a really difficult acting job to do. And I really, really enjoyed that scene. Because sort of, of like, I guess, almost like a live-action version of the, of, like, the Uncanny Valley. Yeah, exactly. Huh. It's but, yeah, I, I liked all of the scenes he was in a lot. My... Hello? Sorry, I'm still listening. I just I got a message on our Twitch thing that was saying our stream health is unstable and the keyframe interval is too high. Oh no! But yeah, I was, I was still listening to what you were saying. I'll have to figure out how to fix that later. But yeah, uh, I thought uh, I don't remember the I don't know the actress's name, but the one who played a uh, Priz, she was yeah. delightfully weird. Yeah, she was pretty pretty good and weird. Her dying, like, I don't want to say, like, animation, because that's what my, my video game brain was, but the way, like, when Decker was killing her... And was, she, like, flails around on the ground. ...was very unsettling. Like, I forgot about that. Yeah. I specifically wrote that it was rugged as shit. <clears throat> Waiting for a sigh, some sort of response. Nope. You can see all the response you'll get in the in the feed. <laughs> the fact that you're not going to give me a response is all the response that I need. Good. You can't win this. I cannot win it. But that uh I had some questions for what you thought about certain things in the movie is Yeah. First of all, I don't think they ever say why they're called blade runners. Yeah, I'd wondered about that, too. So I was going to ask what you thought why they were called that. I had no idea. I remember thinking, like, I wonder why, but I don't think I pursued that thought any. Um, Is there a reason? Do you know? Oh, no. I hadn't looked anything up. You're really good at, I don't know, having stuff like that. So I was like, I'll hear what he has to say. But uh, Well, I'm sorry I disappointed you. I forgive you. I will Google it quick and see if there's anything else. How do you change the keyframe interval? It's probably something to But anyway, Blade Runner. Let's see if there's a good name meaning. Title meaning. There we go. Ah, the term. Wait, what? That might. This might not be true, but according to the very first thing is uh, it comes from the name 
a novella by the name of William by called Blade Runner by William S. Burroughs. It's a smuggler of medical supplies. Hmm. Huh. I don't know what that has to do with hunting down replicants, but it's like found treatment. I guess it's got like the name. Oh well, it sounds. Oh, something just happened. Someone did it. I will. Uh, I heard our thing chime. Oh, fabulous owl riot just subscribed. Thank. You. Oh, oh, Thank oh you. I missed. Thank you though. Is what it sounds like is the movie Blade, like the novella Blade Runner, is about something different, and Ridley Scott just liked the name so much that he bought the rights to it and then just changed the story. That's to... pretty funny. But yeah, that's what it sounds like because they're called Blade Runners because the thing that was mostly being smuggled was uh, hospital grade scalpels. Huh. So they're literally running blades. Well, that's a lot more direct than I thought it would be. But also, like, almost entirely untied to anything in the movie. <laughs> Which is funny. But, uh, okay. Well, then that's, that's, that's the answer to that question, I guess, until someone pops in the chat and goes, no, you're idiots, dumb. Thank you again, Fabulous Al, right? We're, f we're halfway, and we still have 50 days to go on our goal. Uh... But why do you think uh, Roy's character saves Decker at the end? Hmm. I guess... I guess my thought on it would be... I feel like Roy's character is fighting so that he can live for, like, most of that movie. But mm -hmm. by the end, he, like, knows there's nothing he can do. He's just going to die. And so, like, maybe killing Decker isn't what he's living for anyways, you know? Like, mm -hmm. Decker was just in the way of his goal, but now the goal's unobtainable, so he saves him. And that also kind of, like, gives him a chance to talk with at least one person about, like, the struggles that he's going through, you know? Like, if you know that your death is coming up in literally minutes then it like makes a sort of sense to stop fighting the guy that you were fighting and to just tell him like look dude this is why I was fighting and this is everything that I've lost and now it's over like I'm I'm losing it there's nothing I can do but at least someone can hear me that's a good answer that was I had a couple guesses and the one i didn't think of it as deeply as you did but the one was yeah just having someone there when you're dying that's a thing that i've seen in like a lot of stuff where like enemies on the battlefield will just be like hey i'm dying will you just listen to me while i'm dying the yeah. other thing i was thinking about which might be like too much of a reach is the idea of robots machines and expectation is mm -hmm like when we build a machine we expect it to work the same way every time like we expect our vacuum cleaners to suck up stuff and hold it in there we expect our computers to hold all of our pornography and help us find the answers to all of our questions yeah so in that instance roy who is not a human he's a machine being the villain or the antagonist at least to decker in that moment where decker would die which in like the normal demo like not demographic the dynamic of an antagonist protagonist roy has every reason to let him fall and die yeah thus meeting expectations but he doesn't and he saves him which is unexpected which is outside of like the bounds of calculation of like a movie audience almost and i feel like that was sort of like an up you to the universe where it's like I'm human and I can act in unexpected ways I am more than a machine hmm so haha -ha. I'm that's kind of what I was thinking after a while when I was trying to really get up the, my own ass with movie stuff was I was like because it, it, it is weird that he saves him 
Cause yeah. I don't really feel like through the movie he comes to risk. Does he like? I don't get the idea that he comes to like respect Decker, like Batman, Joker sort of thing. Yeah, I mean, well, it's not like they ever really even talk up until that altercation, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I don't so. think. Do they even run into each other before that altercation? <laughs> I feel dumb. Like I'm trying to remember. I don't. I kind of feel like they don't. Oh no, I he think... he does. He does oh. chase uh, Roy because it's in the scene where Leon gets killed. Decker was chasing after Roy when Roy then Leon tries to murder Decker and then Rachel shoots Leon. Yeah, he was. That was okay. I believe like the start of their meeting. So yeah, to me it was it felt weird from like a movie themes aspect, hmm. but everything else in the movie felt like it was done so deliberately. It's just like, well, why would he say them? Yeah, and that's why I was just like, well, because like Decker looks surprised while he's saving. He almost looks confused. Yeah, while he's he hosting him up. Does. So that's why I was like, like is that the point is he's doing the it, thing that is unexpected. Hmm. Yeah, it's hard to know. I guess, like, maybe there's an argument, too, that he's thinking about, like, well, I can't save myself, but maybe if I can convince this Blade Runner that he was making a mistake in hunting me down, then, like, maybe I can change the future for other replicants. That's also a really good answer. I thought, my guess was when you said, I can't save myself, but at least I can save this one life. That's where I thought you were going to stop, and then you, you surpassed my expectations again, Robert. <laughs> but i mean it's just overall it's a really good movie. it is it is a slower movie yeah but i was never like bored with it mm -hmm. like the pace is slow but there's so much atmosphere in every scene and like it there's... made me want to play cyberpunk 2077 so bad yeah i also think it's really weird going back to the number of cuts is the final cut is actually shorter than the director's cut by like a minute right uh, it's, it's like five to seven minutes huh because uh yeah because the uh the final cut is oh that's is, i was thinking of what <laughs> oh because the final I think cut what is, i was god damn it <laughs> go you go i'll go, stop go, go 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 okay because the final cut is uh an hour and 57 minutes and then the director's cut is uh two hours and six minutes hmm so anyway, what were you going to say? I think what I was thinking of is the sequel is like a minute shorter. Oh, okay. I could be remembering that wrong. That's my guess, though, about where my wires got crossed. But Oh, another difference that I just saw uh, between like the theatrical and then the... F actually, it might be the final cut period is the scene where he is... where Roy is poking out that dude's eyeballs... Yeah, that that was brutal. That doesn't even get all the way shown in the movie, like in the other cuts. It's, it's when he puts it like it's, he puts his thumbs on his eyeballs, and then it cuts up to Roy's face. Yeah, um, I'd read that like some of the ultra violent shots had got cut from the other versions, but mm -hmm. were added into the final cut. But it's just it's normally in like the final cut of a movie. It's normally like much longer. So I was yeah. surprised that it was shorter. I guess I that doesn't necessarily surprise me just because like we tend to think about adding link to a movie as something that makes it better but I think like mm -hmm. a lot of the time the cleverest things you can do is like removing things from a movie often makes it a lot better. Oh yeah, cut like, cut um, the chaff. For me, like my roommates really love the extended cut of Lord of the Rings and I fucking hate it. It's terrible. <laughs> like, uh, it, uh, like I love those movies, but they're too long as it is. And like adding more in did not make them better. And like Oh, uh, no, Al Riot, no. I I am right. I am right. It's better without all the extra stuff. I, um, I sort of more agree with Fabulous because I, from what I think of what the the extended thing is trying to do, but I can definitely see why someone would be like, "This is too long," oh, and man, now it's I've even really longer. hit a nerve. Um, now if only you're like, it would have been better if the case was made of white chocolate. <laughs> I mean, that would be pretty good. 
No, it wouldn't. That would be horrible. Like, you just have white chocolate exposed to just the air all the time. Sitting on your well, you case, it would melt. Eat the case and then put the, di the disc in another case. What case would you then put it in? Just like, I mean, I guess my thought was a blank DVD case. Oh, okay. That makes sense. But, yeah, I get, get what you're saying is, like, yeah, a lot of... Well, and that's, like, I'd read way back in the day Stephen King's um, hybrid book on writing slash autobiography, and that's something that he said in there that I've always thought about a lot is, like, if you want to be a good writer, one of the most important things you can do is learn to go through your own writing and cut stuff out that doesn't actually need to be there. Even if it's stuff that's like beautifully written and it hurts to get rid of it, like telling your story in a more direct way makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. that's, that's why editors are really important because they can look at it without having all the emotional attachment be like, this part didn't make sense. Hmm. Like, that's like when I wrote my book, available on Amazon, Swallow. Uh, like, there's one review on it, which I'm almost positive is you. <laughs> is, uh, maybe. Is, uh, may or may not have been me. Uh, was, um, they're like, oh, it could have been edited a little bit more. Which, like, it didn't surprise me, but it, it, it does, it made me kind of go, uh, because I did go through and I was like, oh, I'm going to cut a bunch of stuff. And I felt like this was good enough. And then I was like, oh. I wish I could have had an editor cut it more. Yeah. Well, whenever you're getting around to your next book, feel free to send it to me and I'll do what I can. Yeah, well, I did I did send out this book to a bunch of people and I was like, hey, can you guys read it and give back to notes? And I gave you months and I was like, but I need to submit it now for this contest. But did you give it to me? I was pretty sure I gave it to, I thought I gave it to you, Will, and Evan, and then my dad. I have no recollection of that. Maybe I'm a crazy person and didn't give it to you. But I, will definitely I mean, I could you... be a crazy person, too. I I feel like if I had said I would edit it, that I would have. Well, I'm usually pretty good about keeping my promises. But... Well, when I finish my second one, which I don't know when, because working on this thing is now more of my job, I will definitely be like, Robert, please read this and tell me what I did wrong. Also, look at all these monster girls. I will. I will read that, and I will look at all the monster girls. Yes. I like Monster Girls. Yeah, everyday Monster Girls. Uh, so, is there uh, anything else you want to talk about about Blade Runner? Man, well, I so I did want to mention like one thing that was cool in this for me mm -hmm. was seeing how much it had inspired one of my favorite movies, which is uh, Ghost in the Shell. Like, there are a lot of scenes in this where I realized Ghost in the Shell was like kind of visually quoting it, ah. like. Um, the scene where he's chasing, I think it's the first replicant he chases and kills in the movie mm -hmm. where she's like the dancer and she runs away in that weird, like transparent top and is like, you know, going through a marketplace and stuff. Mm -hmm. There's a scene in ghost in the shell and it's not the person who's running. Who's in the invisibility thing in that one. It's I guess the, the person current. running is invisible too, no. but yeah. Or is it like, major? Yeah, it's the major Motoko Kusanagi. Okay. I, for some reason, I kept thinking her name was, like, they called her the Colonel. They call her the Major, but, yeah, it's a, I don't know, like, that's a movie that I really love, and I think there are a lot of places where, like, watching Blade Runner, I was like, oh, wow, Ghost in the Shell was quoting Blade Runner in this scene, at least, like, visually quoting it. Um and that was really cool make a list of all of the things that like reached out and licked the side of Blade Runner and then spit it into their own thing that would, it would be, be a lot it would be buckets it would be buckets but yeah, like I don't know it's like the big billboards like wasn't isn't there like one of the big billboards says like Coca-Cola on it and stuff and like oh wait because doesn't the woman say like like drink coca-cola and it like right like the, like the first thing you see i thought when you come in was the big woman on the board and she tells you to drink coca-cola maybe yeah i don't remember Might be nuts. it's just the whole idea of like corporation being the forefront rather than just like individual people it's yeah oh my goodness cyberpunk hurry up i'm 
going to look terrible when that game comes out, because I'm just going to be up streaming it for, like, 12 hours a day. Well, it's good to be excited for it, though. I'm glad you have that. Are you not excited for it? I just haven't looked into it very much. I don't know. I, um... I mean, for as much as you like this movie and Ghost in the Shell. Yeah. Because it kind of, like, leap pads where, from what I've understood, especially with the designs of some of the, like, the Ogs and stuff is, uh, oh my goodness, <laughs> Ghost in the Shell was inspired by Blade Runner, but then there's a lot of stuff from Cyberpunk 2077 that was inspired by Ghost in the Shell. Yeah. And I'm just like, oh. But it's not an anime. All right. I'll have to look into it more. I, As you know, I've never played any of the CD Projekt Red games. I know they're all supposed to be really good. No, they're not. I just... <laughs> what? Not all of them. Okay, well, the, the ones they're known for, though. Yeah. The Witcher series are supposed to be really good. Mm -hmm. Wait. Um, oh, okay, I was thinking of ones that actually was like, they, they helped publish a lot of games that ended up being meh, but yeah, I think they've only actually made the Witcher games. Hmm, gotcha. Those, those are all good, so yes, I take that back, CD Projekt Red, please don't ban me or whatever. But, but yeah, I, uh, I don't know, They're, the games always sound like such a time commitment to me, you know? Like... I mean, how much... Well, I mean, you've played a shitload of Hearthstone. I was gonna be like, how much time do you want to put into a game... Uh, I mean, I don't know. It's hard to say. Like, I don't think there's a rule for me. Um, it's just like, if I know that a game will take a lot of time to play, that's a, a, a bit of a, like, it scares uh -oh. me a little just because I know like my probability of finishing a game goes down as the time that it takes to play it goes up. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that's true for basically anyone. <laughs> yeah. Is I beat Witcher 1, and that was good. I'd never finished Witcher 2 because I, other stuff came up, and it was, it was not my jam at the time. Witcher 3, I played start to finish, did everything, and there wasn't any real parts except for, like, one thing that I did to myself that is not necessary where I felt like oh, I'm bored and doing the same thing over and over again, and that ran me about 85 hours. Hmm. Is that the only thing in it that I'm like, this is terribly paced slash designed is in the last area map that you can go to is like it's a whole bunch of like archipelago island things. And it's a game that like when you start, there's just question marks all over the map. And in this island area there's a dick ton of these question marks like out in the water and they're all the same thing you where it's like you jump you have to jump out of your boat swim down a little bit and then open a chest and swim back up and there's like 30 of them and it took me like two and a half hours to get them all because i wanted to clear all the exclamation points i mean question yeah. marks that was the only time where i was like oh my god aside from that everything was great yeah i just feel like they're games where for me, if I was going to get through them, I'd have to ignore a lot of the side content, but I'm really bad at ignoring side content. No, you don't so. want to ignore the side content. Because that, it's a game where the side content plays into the main content yeah. really well. That's why I like it so much. It's, yeah. So you, you wouldn't want to avoid anything. You just want to do all of it. Yeah. But, but that, anyway. yeah. I was going to say, that tangent. Does that okay. uh, take us into our video game discussion, or is there anything else I, you want to say? I about? actually was looking through my notes. There is one other thing I wanted to mention, just because it fine. was like such a cool thing. I really love when you see Deckard like miss shots. You see his gun like fucking tears shit up, mm -hmm. and that was like, it was really. I really like the fact one that it like you can read into the fact that it has to do that because this is a gun that's meant to kill replicants who are stronger than humans. Mm -hmm. But I also like that the movie like treats the viewer as smart enough to just like figure that out on their own. There's not a scene where like someone explains to Decker, here's your extra strong replicant killing gun. Um, but I just, I don't know. I just thought it was like a really cool touch that they thought of like 
hey, his gun would probably be more powerful than a normal gun. It is a cool gun, and I believe like yeah. that is a gun that has been like put in other stuff. Like I'm almost positive his gun is in our Fallout New Vegas playthrough. It's the that gun that William oh, yeah. has. It's just That's a trademark neat. weird because it's like a revolver, right? Yeah, I think so. It's just because revolvers are the coolest style of handgun, and I will fight anyone That's who true. says I'm wrong. No, I agree with you. But yeah, it's a cool gun. Decker is just Magnus kind of like a cool character who, when you think about it, isn't that cool of a character. He's just like really well designed. Yeah, yeah, I think that. I would agree with that. He's he's a trench coat. He has a cool revolver and he eats street ramen. Oh, there's one yeah. thing I do want to ask you is, mm -hmm. do you think Decker is a replicant? Um, I I feel like I'd have to spend more time watching the movie for that because I'd read that that was a thing that people debated, mm -hmm. and like. I didn't really notice any of the clues for that when I was watching through. So, like, if you ask me to go based just on the facts that I currently am aware of, then the answer is no. But I also think that there's probably a lot that I missed. And so, like, maybe if I went back and saw, like, here's the case that people make for maybe he is a replicant, then that would change my mind. I, mean, I did you... read that Harrison Ford said he didn't think that Decker was a replicant, for whatever that's worth. Well, but... do you want the definitive answer? I guess it's in the it's in the sequel, isn't it? I mean, it was it's in the it's for sure in the sequel, but Ridley Scott was like, "Here's the answer." Sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he's a replicant. Oh, okay. Well. Yeah. There well, you go. If that changes the way you think of the movie, see, that was the thing is in the that's not played up at all like there's no way to really get it from the theatrical release hmm. but it's something he wanted to be in the movie so it's added, yeah. it's added in the director's cut like with the unicorn I knew the like unicorn dream sequence yeah had something to do with it and he gets given like an origami unicorn at some point it's that he is a replicant because like every replicant is given like some seed memory to like build their own personality off of yeah and decker's replicant is his memories come from that detective guy who's his partner hmm. so that's why he because he makes origami earlier and then he leaves him the origami at the end gotcha so i like I, that's not like a spoiler like i'm almost positive like as soon as the movie for the sequel starts they're like yeah, Decker's a replicant. <laughs> like, I heard that, like, in movie reviews. Like, when it was coming out, they're like, yep. And gotcha. I was like, oh, okay, so this isn't, like, a twist? Okay, cool, that's good, because that would have been a shitty thing to try to twist, but you told me it already. Yeah. Because I think the sequel is about uh, Gosling's character being a Blade Runner chasing down Decker. Hmm. Or he's chasing down someone and he uses it and Decker helps him because he's also a replicant former Blade Runner. I don't know, but I definitely want to see it. I do too. But, okay. So, oh, we're going for about an hour talking about this movie and a bunch oh, of other shit. That's so, what I'm talking about. It is good. Anything else you want to say before we move on to the next possibly shorter topic? <laughs> I don't think so. All um, right. Well, it's time for things to get spicy. Yeah. We have our most controversial video game opinions. Indeed we do. So, do you want to go first, or do you want me to? Uh, why don't you hit me with one? Okay. Uh, one, and I was just talking to Will and Evan about this earlier, so they're just going to be like, who cares, and we'll stop watching now, is there's a big story in the news right now about this... I uh, need Will and Evan to stick around, by the way. Please don't leave. Uh it's this game that's really popular right now it's called Mordhau I don't know if you've heard of it I know the name sounds familiar but I don't think I know anything about it it is a it's a game like chivalry where it's just like a first person medieval melee brawler yes okay yeah and the issue is like right now all like when you make a character your only choice is white dude 
and then you can kind of mm. change bits, is that they're planning to add, uh, you can be different races and a different gender, and which sounds good, but the thing that came out is that they were possibly planning on having, like, a filter option, so that, like, you could click, so it's still, no matter what anyone else has picked for their character, they'll still just look at white dudes. Mm. So that kind of became an issue of people being like, diversity's good, and other people like, historical accuracy, mer. And the thing that got me thinking about it, and not necessarily for this game, but for other games, and it's the idea of the gender uh, filter, is mm -hmm. I feel like if I was playing certain games, I don't know if I'd want there to be lady versions, only because if it's... I don't like seeing ladies get horribly beat up and maimed. Hmm. in ways that are realistic like as I was thinking about it I'm like uh, I mean that's pro it's probably it's, I mean, it's definitely a sexist thing yeah but um, like a game like Fallout the Fallout series there's like gore and explosions but it's like played up and it's goofy so that it, it doesn't feel like anything's real but I've yeah. played other games like Manhunt The Last of Us cause like have you played The Last of Us? uh uh the Last of Us, I do not believe you kill a single woman in that game other than, like, in a cutscene. Yeah. And there's a lot of that is, like, the melee combat and shooting is very brutal. Like, you'll grab a dude and, like, smash his face repeatedly against a wall and then, like, plunge his face down onto, like, exposed glass to kill him. Yeah. Or there's this other game called Verdun, which I believe it's either World War One or World War Two shooter like it's in a multiplayer game but like when someone dies they don't just like and fall over unless they get headshot but like if they get shot in the stomach the model will lay there and scream for like medics and for their mom before yeah. bleeding out and dying and I don't know the idea of hearing that in like a lady's voice like something deep inside me like disturbs me more so I was like, if there was a game that was like horribly over the top violent, not over the top violent, that was very violent while feeling grounded, I was like, I don't know if I would use, I think I might use the gender filter. Huh. Just because I don't want to hear ladies getting killed horribly. Because yeah. I, I know it's just like a thing if I hear like a woman scream in a movie or if I used to, I, when I was growing up in Syracuse, which wasn't a really part we lived, wasn't really great. There'd be times at night where I'd just hear a lady scream, and I would shiver, and that would, I don't know, fuck me up for who I am now. Yeah. That I don't like that. So I guess that's my thing is the idea of a gender filter for those sort of games doesn't sound like a terrible thing. I think people can be, it should be able to be whatever race they want to be. Like, that shouldn't be a thing, but I like, it. and you shouldn't be forced to not be a girl just because of how the game is, but. I don't know. The fact that that was an option, I don't think that's horrible. I guess I feel like I would rather that the filter be that the violence gets toned down. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know. For me, my reaction to, like, someone being brutalized is kind of gender neutral, I guess. Like, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to criticize like it's just hard for me to understand that because it's a very it's like a different way of seeing the world than i do you mm -hmm. know and like that doesn't mean that it's invalid or wrong um i mean it i don't know like issues of gender and violence are really really complicated yep and yeah i my my inclination like i said would be that you filter the violence instead of the gender um especially if it's like a game like this where it's a multiplayer game and people want to be able to choose like well this is the avatar that's me i want to be able to be me or at least my like version of me that i made in this world and like i want other people to see me in that way as well i think it's totally fair for them to say like i feel discriminated against if you're going to to like put a filter on that turns off who i wanted to be in this game I guess, well, for, first point I want to put, uh, thing I want to talk about with what you just said is I think filtering out the violence has a bigger impact on the message of the game than filtering the gender because, like, the level of violence, I don't know what saying, games is art, 
how violent you want to make the game, I think, has a bigger statement than what gender is in it. So, I don't know. That's the... Th I guess that's the thing to me, is, like... Like, I... And I, don't, I think yeah. that's kind of true, but I think if you're saying, I can't stand to see women experience violence specifically, mm -hmm. that's, like... I don't know how to put this um that in its own way is that's still like a censoring of the of the art in a way and i guess you're saying like it's not as severe of one but i guess my perspective would be to say that like if you're saying i need to use this filter because whatever this piece of art was originally designed to be it's like too extreme for me mm -hmm. then i'd rather that just say like okay well i'm filtering this part instead of that part i mean but, i get what you're what you're trying to say yeah but in this case like the women the gender thing wasn't part of the original design yeah but i don't know because because the other thing i'm thinking about is i'm almost pot going back to the last of us is last of us you play as a dude yeah and you only murder dudes is in the sequel you're going to be playing as a lady and even in the trailer they show the lady murdering ladies hmm. so i have a strong suspicion that in the sequel while playing as a lady you're going to be murdering there's going to be ladies that you can murder yeah so i think that sort of a thing in and of itself hmm. where it's too much for some like i don't i feel like i feel that my the way i feel about this isn't super detached from how most people feel yeah because definitely like the optics of having a male character running around brutalizing women are different than the optics of having a female character running around brutalizing women mm -hmm. um yeah i get that but so the other, the other thing I was saying, because you were saying discrimination is, I don't think it's discrimination if you're allowed to do it on your end, but I don't have to see it on my end. Um, that's like a tricky topic. I guess I would say, like, if I'm thinking about, like, if you buy a skin in a video game... Mm -hmm. partially you're buying that skin because you like it and you want to look at it but you're also buying it because you want other people to see that skin you know mm -hmm. like the way part of the fun of a video game is getting to be a part of a different world and have people react to you and that different world in the way that you want to be reacted to you know and if like I don't know for me like I don't I like genuinely don't feel that strongly attached to my gender so, like, I'm never personally in a situation where, like, a game only has male characters or female characters, and so it, like, bothers me. And, like, you know, I usually play as women anyways. Um, do you usually? I, you've have, done it a bunch, but I just... do. You if I have them? the option, I will almost always play as a girl. Okay. Um, I had other friends in high school and college that would do that, too, just because it's, it's a fantasy video game, and you get to be as different as you want. So that yeah. makes sense. Um, but I guess, like, I think there is a very, a worthwhile argument to be made for someone to say, like, as a girl, my whole life, most video game characters have been boys. And, like, when I go in and play video, like, a multiplayer video game, the fact that female character models have been added is, like, kind of a recent development in a lot of ways. And, like, if there are people who do feel attached to their gender and they want to be able to like experience that and express that in the virtual world, I feel like it's really valid for them to say like, I don't just want this on my own screen. I want this to be a part of the way that I get to play in that world. Yeah. I mean, I can sort of see that, but at the same time, if someone paid for something, they want to experience it on their end. However, they want to. So it's valid for that person. Like, I don't want to see me killing women and I paid 60 bucks for this game. 
boohoo yeah. your feelings because that also that argument feels a little entitled anyway where it's this isn't just your thing this is everyone's thing so just because you want me to see your gender doesn't mean i have to see it yeah i mean it's a case where there's like two people uh there's people on both sides who want things and what those things are are mutually exclusive you mm -hmm. literally can't have both um and i my personal inclination like i don't i don't know what's right or wrong you know that's my why these personal... are controversial opinions yeah. Man, you went way, way more controversial than I think I did. But That's why um, this is literally the only one I have. Like, I was thinking about it, and I was like, uh... But, I don't know, I wanted to talk about it, because it was something that, like, I, yeah. I ruminated on for hours after I heard the news story. I was like, huh. Hmm. I yeah. can sort I guess, of see like, this. For me, I don't know. I, I really do think that, like, there's a lot of the way that women experience the world that like having lived as a guy i don't even comprehend because mm -hmm. like i haven't been treated in the ways that women get treated and i guess i for me if the choice is between appeasing the person who says like i just want to be able to be myself and appeasing the person who says like i don't know because you have a very valid point too which is like you're not coming from a, a place of I don't want girls in video games. You're coming from a place of like, I don't want to hurt women in video games. Mm -hmm. um, I guess like, so this is something that we haven't gotten into yet. And you may say like, this is too specious of an argument, but I think that there are a lot of people who will use people who will take your argument, which is made in good faith, mm -hmm. and use it to kind of cover up their own argument, which is made in bad faith. Oh, like, yeah, that's... there are a lot of people who will say that what they want in this game is historical accuracy, but all they really want is just to have the boys club. Yep, that's, and that's like, definitely part of this article. And yeah, stuff. and like, that group of people is kind of like disgusting enough to me in a way that like, I almost, there's a, a vindictive part of me that just wants them to not get what they want mm -hmm. regardless i don't know it's a tricky issue i i really don't like i don't have a counter argument to your argument which is made in good faith um it really is an issue like i was saying where there's just like there's two sides who i think both have perfectly valid good faith arguments mm -hmm. um I don't think I've come over to your side of seeing things, but I can also respect where you're coming from. Well, I appreciate that. Because the other thing I was thinking about more, what you were saying is, I think it also makes sense from a consumer side is, if the the consumer who's on the end where it's, I don't want to see women, and I have paid $60 for whatever game I'm playing. Yeah. They flip the... They flip the switch, and then everything on their end is self-contained to their game. Whereas on the other side, you have the person who's like, I want to play as a girl, and I also want them to see me playing as a girl. They are reaching over to put stuff on that person's plate. And because that person has paid $60, I think there is an argument that that person has the right to say what is on their plate. Even if it comes from horribly bigoted reasons, like I don't want to see black women in there because whatever it's they've paid for a product and mm. that's kind of what the consumer thing is, is it's because i've paid for it i have an expectation for what i'm getting and someone else shouldn't dictate the content to me if i have the option to do something like that yeah I, so i was just i don't think it's right like I, even if this was a filter thing, I don't think I would use it. I, mm. I would see how it would go first. Like, if it was yeah. horrible, I would might, I don't know. Because, like, even a game like Mortal Kombat is so over-the-top and stupid that when girls get their spines ripped out, I still kind of go, ugh. But it's so goofy and stupid that it doesn't feel real. Yeah. 
but I don't know. I haven't seen a game yet where, aside from maybe like the Tomb Raider games, the newer ones where Laura gets torture porned all the time, where that this sort of primal feeling of oh I don't want to see girls get horribly mangled has sort of popped up inside of me. But I'm just yeah. saying, in the f- super future when we have VR and we're playing World War II simulators where someone gets shot and then you can like physically catch their body and hold them as they die, I, I think maybe then might be a time where if I saw a lady bleeding out and screaming in horrible pain, I might be like, oh, yeah, this feels I, weird. But this is yeah. this is hypothetical can like thing. But like I was saying, this yeah. is maybe the i think this is really the only super controversial opinion i have in video games right now yeah i think my inclination would still be to say like well if you can't if that violence is too much Mm -hmm. take the violence instead but Mm. yeah i don't know even then it's just i i feel that someone else shouldn't dictate the way you experience someone on the same like levels you another player shouldn't dictate necessarily what content you get to experience that's up to the developer to say so just because Maybe. Some... i mean i think anytime you're playing a multiplayer game though there's like a certain amount of that like if we took the gender element out of it entirely mm-hmm. and imagined instead like like what if so let's imagine like in a game like Overwatch or League of Legends where people have skins that they've paid money. Mm-hmm. If there were like a lot of people who never put money into the game and they were annoyed at always having to see all these fancy skins. And so the developers added a filter that they could use to take all of the skins off. Yeah, I'd totally be fine with that. Yeah, I guess I wouldn't because I... So like that's I that's know. also yeah. what I'm on is yeah, if I... If I if I, I'm playing the game and I really like the way everyone looks classically, and there's an option like I don't, I think there are some other skins that look better. Then yeah, I would only want to see classic skins. So that is, I will be across the board on that sort of thing. Is because fair enough. I, I don't think some other person has the right to be like, no, you have to look at my pretty pretty princess outfit. Also, I see we have other viewers that aren't people we know, and we just want to throw out right now we acknowledge as two almost thirty something completely white dudes that we are out of our depth talking about gender stuff completely, so we, we don't believe to be experts on anything. That is true. Back in the pool! Okay. <laughs> but yeah, so like what you're saying, that was actually exactly when you brought up Overwatch with the like, yeah, There are some like stupid skins that I'm like, uh, I hate looking at them. If I could put, if I could just see a vanilla skin, I would. Yeah. Because it doesn't I don't. I guess person. it's like, for me it's very different in like between a multiplayer experience and like a single player experience. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know. I, I don't mind that idea in a single player experience, but I think part of what's part of, for me, what's like fun and appealing about a multiplayer experience is getting to like, you know, have your character a bit. But uh, I would, I would also say that you are one of those people who gets an amount of joy trolling people. Sometimes. Yeah. Some, I've played a bunch of games where you and another person we know get in the chat and not be mean, but just start saying a bunch of shit like right away to start getting responses. Is I feel yeah. you are one I of those. I do want to specify here, like when we troll people anymore, it's never in a like. No, oh, it's never like in a hateful it's just way. Like, it's just like silly things. Yes, it's, like we'll go into a game and accuse someone of putting the of, cereal in bef- milk before the cereal and stuff like that. Exactly. Yeah, and so, then like try and start a try and like see if you can start some beef over their cereal eating habits. So what um, I'm saying is, you are definitely someone I s- could see reaching over onto someone's plate and be like, "Here's the thing I made," and yeah. And they they already have things for people like you. Or I could block you. I can stop you from talking to me. That's so. By your That's argument, true. the developer shouldn't be able to do that. So there are already things to stop levels of. Well, I want you to experience this thing that I want you to experience. That's true. I would argue that I think those are very different levels of things because, like, the reason you can mute someone is because they can genuinely harass you exactly yeah like they're uh, not it's not apples in to a apples. way that like yeah but I'm, I'm saying like from 
perfect thing is if someone doesn't want to go along with something, there are already some levels of locks that you can be like, nope, don't want to do that. So, mm -mm. I don't know. But anyway, uh, what are what are some of your things that you feel? Yeah. So I think I interpreted um, controversial oh, no. more as contentious. Okay. I do have I do have one that I think is like maybe a little controversial. At least I think some people would debate me on it. And we can start there if you want, or we can just do some of my contentious ones. Hey, but, whatever. Uh, I just I just wanted this one to be a little bit more. We haven't really had until right now, which I'm really happy we did. I don't think we've really had like a debate. Yeah. Of anything, it's always just been like, yeah, did you like it? Very, very yeah. <laughs> so yeah what, what do you get okay well let's start um contentious and then we'll get a little controversial later sounds on. good okay so um i one of mine was i think of all of the games that i would say are under the umbrella of the mario franchise yep. i think that the best is luigi's mansion like any game from anything involving the mario universe so i'm saying any game where the main where the bulk of the cast of the game are mario characters okay so i'm not counting smash but am counting like mario kart or mario tennis although i also think luigi's mansion is better than smash hey that's good also for other people who are in the chat if you have anything you want to say get get in this scrum and say yeah. stuff but please share your contentious or controversial opinions unless they're horribly racist controversial enough that we have to ban you please yes. do not share the opinions that will force us to ban you this is what i think about the jews don't oh no um part of me would be very sad uh but okay like i can see what you're saying like that is like i i disagree yeah and i could definitely see that being an opinion people were like are you crazy i think luigi's mansion is good i don't think i actually ever finished the game because i was just borrowing it from a friend yeah like of all the mario games or the majority whatever i think probably the best one is mario odyssey if i had to pick one i haven't played odyssey yet what? i don't need to oh yeah know, you do. Right? it's great uh, um, but it won't be as good as Luigi's Mansion. That's fine. Now, when you're saying Luigi's Mansion, you're talking about like the first one or the original on GameCube. Okay. I didn't really care for the 3DS one. All right. I mean, um, yeah. That's... And I'm perfectly willing to admit that is entirely just like my personal taste. Um, I, I mean, like it's so different from all of the other games. things. Yeah, it it is. So I can it's see just why of all of the games under that the umbrella of that franchise it's the one i like the most i definitely agree that luigi is a much more interesting character than mario yeah for mario sure. is such a nothing character because once again i think it was a thing i remember seeing in zero punctuation where like mario is like this mascot that has to be so broadly appealing to everything that yeah. they can't really give him a character he's Sp like mickey mouse mm -hmm. who tried to kill himself in a number of comics uh <laughs> uh but yeah like luigi they can kind of do what they want with him yeah. so it is weird though how different his character is across the different series actually you know what i take my back my favorite mario thing is paper mario thousand year door hmm. that is my favorite mario ip game i need thing. to play that sometime I, I never played any of the paper marios uh one i didn't finish but i played it i liked it thousand year door is great the one on the Wii or Wii, whatever the one after that one was, was okay because the takes. I liked the turn based combat in Thousand Year Door. And Thousand mm -hmm. Year Door is the last one, I think, that has turn based combat, but maybe they bring it back in Sticker Star, but that game sucked in general, so. Yeah. I also really love the Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga games. Hmm. Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga 1 would also be a top contender there. I think I played one of those. They're really good. But, but they're not as good as Luigi's Mansion. I mean, you're wrong, but that's fine. <laughs> but, uh... Luigi, Luigi's Mansion, to me, definitely was a game where it started to feel a bit repetitive after a while, especially when it's like, go get mm -hmm. the 50 boos. I was like, uh... I think part of it is just that, like, it hits so many things for me. Like, I love haunted houses. 
haunted house, like the aesthetic of haunted house in media oh. is a thing that I love. So I are love we going to take the, you into some haunted houses in real life? I don't really like them in real life. Okay. I, was just, um, I mean, I'll go if you really want to drag me to one. We'll make it a subscriber. I feel goal. like my, I have like, I have had two reactions to haunted houses, which is that I either ha like when I was younger in like high school, I went to a couple and what I realized in the process of those was that I didn't feel scared if I was laughing at the people, but then you feel like a jackass because you are being a jackass. If you go into a haunted house and like, instead of being scared, you like laugh at it and make light of it because mm -hmm. like, that's not what that place is for. Nope. Uh, but then the other option is to go in and, and be terrified the whole time. And I don't like being, I, I like being terrified in very limited circumstances where I'm like at home in front of a TV and I can turn the lights on anytime I want. Makes sense. But yeah, if, if, if at some point in time for subscribers, we want to drag me through a haunted house and I will promise to be a good boy and not a jackass and I'll just be a little scaredy cat um, we can do that alright oh. <laughs> just as a side note for anyone who is uh, for more, more familiar with how OBS and Twitch runs they can help us is I just was doing a little bit of digging and it said the problem is our keyframe interval is too high and I looked up and I have our keyframe interval set at zero and I don't think it can go below zero Huh. Well. Anyway. So, all right. That's good. Uh, what? I, I. Oh, monster! This late at night. Dang. Just a little sip. Nice. So, would you? Would you be jazzed if we got Monster as a sponsor? Yeah, I'd be jazzed if we got almost any sponsor though. What's there are probably some sponsors that I would not be jazzed about. Don't but, say uh, them though. <laughs> I won't. Uh. Okay. So I can definitely see that's. I, see, I can't, like, argue with you over that one. It's just, like, oh, that is such clearly a personal opinion. Yeah, compared to yours, it's contentious, not controversial. So, um, I thought, I, yeah, I've been thinking about that all week, and I'm just like, oh, man, I hope people don't think I'm, like, a crazy, racist, sexist person by the end of this. It's, But, okay, so what are some other ones you got on your list? Okay, I mean, do we want to do my, like, potentially controversial ones? Because I have two that are pretty related. Okay, sure, yeah. Okay, so the first one is, I really believe that um, if you pay money for loot boxes or catch upon things, that that should be legally regulated as gambling, and oh, yeah. should have the shit text out of it. Um, okay, yeah, I agree with you. We're done. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like okay, but I so I have another one that I think is maybe more extreme that you might not see coming okay I'm which excited. is i i don't think it's that extreme oh. but i think that purchasable in-game currencies should be straight up illegal um oh. like like games where you have to buy crystals and then you spend the crystals on things i think that should be illegal okay i'm, I'm interested to hear why okay so i think that as a company the reason that you do that is because our stupid brains are really bad at thinking about money and they're especially bad about thinking about money when you run it through even one layer of filtering yep and so like the reason that games have purchasable currencies is because they know that our stupid brains can't deal with it That's and it's definitely a way probably to get a people reason. To... it's well i mean the other reason of course is like people just give you money and then even if they never spend that currency you already got the money but i think that the big one is just that like it's a way of getting past the ability of people's brains to think critically about what they're spending their money on like they don't um, think i spent twenty thousand dollars it's i only spent 25 million giggly bucks it's fine yep mm -hmm. yep that's and like i i just think so, like, the reason that I would say that loot boxes should be regulated, whereas this should be illegal, is, like, as shitty as playing on 
the like dopamine seeking activities of people who are addicted to gambling is mm -hmm. as like a way to make money i do think there is at least some value to the consumer there whereas with the purchasable in-game currencies i think there's absolutely no value to the consumer the only value is to the company and that value is coming entirely from the fact that they're manipulating the way that a human's brain works in order to trick them into spending more money i think you're on a track i don't think because just freedom of market i don't think it should be illegal i do feel that like stuff like that which wouldn't really work that well. It's like, I don't think you should, if we put it a thing sort of like alcohol or smoking, someone under the age of 18 shouldn't be able to buy it. Yeah. Is to play super devil's advocate for the company about the value of in-game currency is All right. especially like in a game where you can kind of earn it on its own is there's an immersion level to some things, I think where it might be weird like if every time you had to make a purchase you had to like put in like your credit card information to buy the wand of smiggledy bix but if mm. it's like oh i can just give them 18 hearth light crystals it's like okay that sort of fits yeah and the kind of people who get super into that thing i feel like are people who are really into the game and would appreciate that level of immersion but i can definitely see there is no real like financial reason to have them other than you can use them to get around certain things where like i can send someone <laughs> trying to think of the best way to do this is <sighs> my brain is trying to get like anti-money laundering things is where i could send you if i'm sending you 50,000 crystals I know you're going to be only spending that equivalent in the game and I'm not giving you $20 that you'd go and buy weed with it not weed sorry like alcohol if you're a 13 year old yeah but yeah I, I don't agree that they should be illegal because people should be able to kind of buy what they want mm. but it, it people should be allowed to shoot themselves in the foot if only so that they will not treat the foot and it gets gangrenous and they die and they are removed from the gene pool. So I guess I don't. So like, I think part of the reason why, like these are things that I really care about is that like, I know that I'm the type of person who's susceptible to these, you mm -hmm. know, like I've, I've gotten suckered into one or two mobile games in my day. And like, I am embarrassed about the amount of money that I spent in them. Do you, you know, think like, you... oh, sorry. And like, I know that there's, I guess partially since I think about free will from the perspective of a determinist where I don't really believe in free will, I think that humans are weirdly complicated biological machines mm -hmm. and like, I guess I feel like taking advantage of the way that human psychology works and then saying, well, you didn't have to do that feels a little bit, it feels to me not all that different from like if a drug dealer was saying to you, well, you didn't have to buy more meth, you know, like that's, that's technically true. You didn't have to buy more meth, but like, that's not the way that human brains work. Yeah. I can once again, like see where you're coming from, but there, there is a big difference between myth and digital currency in our society. Yeah. I, I think there's a difference, I guess, like for me, <laughs> Hey, it's Dervic. Oh, can I do the thing? Damn it. All right, I so. guess, like, you and me are probably thinking about very different games in terms of digital currency, too. Because, like, are you thinking uh, of, when like, I'm Hearthstone? thinking about Hearthstone, 
Well, I don't think you buy digital currency. I guess, well, you don't ever buy the gold on Hearthstone. Oh, you don't? No, you just buy packs directly. Gotcha, uh, okay. But I am thinking about some of the, like, Gachapon games that I've played. Mm -hmm. So, like, the digital currency is tied into the dopamine loop of the Gachapon mechanic. Yeah. Um, and, like, the reason that they're using a digital currency in that game is because they don't want you to think about how much money you're gambling. And, like, it's perfectly valid to say digital currency and meth are very different things, but, like, gambling addiction is a very real thing. Brains, like, like I have a brain that reacts to dopamine hits in a way that, like, I don't always... Ha like, I'm not out of control, but, like, I'll make really stupid, stupid decisions because of the way that my brain reacts to dopamine, you know? And, like, it just feels really shitty to me to have companies that know that and will prey upon it. Mm -hmm. With also kind of getting, like, really weird into what human beings are and should be, I think we've also, if you're looking at, like, a naturalistic perspective, we've gone further than people are maybe supposed to, is people sort of tricking and taking advantage of each other is what we've done since the beginning of time. Yeah. It was some tribes tricking other people and then the, the, usually the opposite was those other people would die <laughs> and mm -hmm. they would be removed. But now we're not allowed to trick murder each other. So now the people who get tricked are still around and going, what the fuck? So... Yeah, like it, it is sh shitty for businesses to do, and I think I think I got it to work where I made Dervic a VIP. Did you get any sort of message on your end, Dervic? But once again, I don't know. Like making it illegal, yeah, seems like very restrictive. It, That's fair. Dang it. Okay, because it says I've added Dervic as a VIP to this channel. So. His, his oh. name is now slightly further to the right, though. Oh, he has a little badge, though, on my thing. He has a little diamond. Oh, that's probably something. I only have ten slots, and I gave one to you, Dervic. You helped make this channel what it is. But Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Um, I guess I, like, I wasn't thinking about games where the currency is like a part of the immersion of that world i still think there's like kind of an ookiness to it that i don't like but um i'm willing to see this point but it is there's i definitely fully believe it should be regulated and i yeah. i never even thought about taxing it that does that's a good idea like how i definitely think with loot boxes they should be taxed so that they're only barely profitable like the reason that they're in every game right now is because you can just print free money yep. if you're and i think that needs to be like disincentivized I, I really like that china makes it so that you have to see you get to see the odds to winning anything in a loot box yeah that was a weird sentence saying i like that china does something <laughs> for so long everything they've done is ready to go no um, Man, well, that was all of my controversial opinions. I have more contentious ones if you want to talk yeah, about. Yeah, let's let's mellow it back a little bit away from the things of gender and drug addiction. Oh man, you think it's going to get mellowed out, uh -oh. but um, then I'm going to tell you that the Nintendo GameCube port of Sonic Adventure 2 Battle is the best Sonic game ever made and is also just a great game. Okay, but you're like at least on the last part you're like matter of fact wrong like that one is that's a bad dumb one. Oh hey oh, we got a big comment coming in from fabulous hour right give me a second to read it that is also a shitty practice yeah too yeah or ones where yeah, or you'll buy something, and then when you spend that thing, you have a little bit left over, but it's not enough, so it keeps that loop. That, yes. Really shitty yeah. predatory practices like that, or they suck. For sure. And even, like, well, Nintendo has changed this with their current eShop, but I think, like, 
in some of their previous eShop versions, it was only like, like it was still money, but it, if you wanted to spend money on the eShop, you would have to like upload ten dollars or twenty five dollars to the store at a time, mm -hmm. and then like the games would all cost whatever normal games would cost. So you would always have just like some loose change in the eShop if you ever wanted to buy anything there. That was irritating. That makes sense. But now they just let you pay what your game actually costs. Even though they give you the option anytime you go to buy a game to upload more than what the game costs to the eShop. Yep. That's sort of what Steam... I mean, still a bunch of stores do that really like... Yeah. Oh, wait, no, I, I just I saw you were saying. Never mind, I'm a crazy person. I was thinking, like, Steam does that where they only sell gift cards in certain amounts, but that's totally different. I'm dumb. But anyway, back to your... Uh, my brain's all crazy because of your ridiculous Sonic opinion. Uh, my true Sonic opinion, um, that it is an incredible game. It's an awesome soundtrack. Uh, like, uh, oh, everything you're saying hurts... Uh, I mean, thank you, thank you, Al Riot. It he's, is the best Sonic. He's also wrong, but that's fine. Uh, I don't. Can I get some ride or dies in chat for Sonic Adventure Two Battle? No, you cannot. We'll see. Uh, Dervik is old enough to have played better Sonics, but maybe he knew better to just stay away from Sonic entirely is yeah i there are no good 3d sonics except for sonic adventure 2 battle no on the nintendo gamecube did That's... you you played the pc port right no no you played the gamecube one yeah i played the gamecube and the dreamcast version oh fuck i was gonna try and like take this from you by claiming that you hadn't played the good port no i owned the gamecube version and i know it's a bad game it's a great game it's you and William and Evan and all you you gumgrums up there are just blinded by nostalgia. Think about it. You were running around at the speed of sound. First of all, you weren't because you cars could pass to you. Go, and you were following your rainbow. But, uh, no, it had shit like you'd be running away from that truck at the very beginning. You can just turn around and run back at the truck. And the truck will back up so it can't hit you. Man, I never realized that. Yeah, because the game's piece That's the shit. thing. Is it? It doesn't. It doesn't matter because I ran from the truck anyways. The truck did its job. Like okay. It made me run, in terror because I thought I was gonna get hit by a truck. Also, Sonic should just be able to move because the truck doesn't, like, go from side to side, and there's totally you just move to one side, and the truck wouldn't hit you, but the yeah. game forces you to run on the road okay i will say this i do think the truck is one of the worst parts of that game no we're gonna keep talking about the truck <laughs> uh can't pick out the worst part of sonic and claim that that was the whole of sonic adventure 2 it's battle. just the driest about the turd in the rest part? of the the bm that is on the disc okay but there was the snowboarding part the rest of the city the snowboarding part isn't even that good as a snowboarding part yeah, Knuckles and Rouge levels were awesome. No, they weren't. That Tails and Eggman levels where you get to run around in a robot suit. Oh, my God. You got the level is Shadow the Hedgehog. You got a Shadow the what? It was Shadow, right? The Hedgehog? No, but what you, you, call, you said Hedgehog. Hedgehog. Because so, just... he's head of all the hogs. The best Sonic game is uh, Sonic uh, Team Racing. But... That doesn't have an adventure to battle in it, though. No, I know, because right. it knew what it had done was a sin. And, uh, it's, so much of that game is stupid, except for all the grinding on rails. That stuff's rad. Yeah. Look, let's, let's talk about actual shit. Dervik has a point. He said he's always hated pre-order bonuses. Yeah. And he has done the healthy thing of never playing a Sonic game. That is probably the healthy thing is pre-order bonuses i definitely think come from a very gentler line of predatory things of 
I just re- I remember in the heyday of all of the stores, like every store would have a different pre-order bonus. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think there is still a lot of that. I, yeah. I don't know. It's it's so like, I got burned by a pre-order, um, recently. Oh, okay. So is this uh, about Colonial Marines again? No, it's not the Colonial Marines story again. It's actually about a game that I really, really love, um, which is Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. Uh Uh-oh. But the Switch port doesn't work. It literally crashes. Like, I can't even remember the last time I played a console game that crashes. The reason that it released a week later than the other versions, I found this out after getting my pre-order and starting to have problems with it is that they spent like an extra week trying to get it up to speed for the switch version oh and they still weren't able to and like the last that i checked they still haven't fixed it i returned my copy and got it on the playstation 4 and it's way better there like it's one of the it's one of the best games i've ever played Uh, oh and you should stop playing it and so you can stream it i don't want to play it right now. i'm so far in already No, you have to restart But I was like, I mean, I already restarted once when I was like six hours into the game and suddenly I couldn't make it between two checkpoints without the game crashing on me, which is just like abysmal. And so like, it felt so shitty to have pre-ordered that game and waited so long and been so exciting. And then what they sent me was a broken product, you know, like, and that's just like, I guess that's like why pre-order bonuses are a thing is because they want you to spend your money on something when you don't even know if it will be good. And I keep doing it because I pre-ordered Astral Chain for next month. Um, Stop buying all these games so you can idiot. save up for a better computer. I don't want to play Astral Chain. So we can play Dark Souls 3. But Astral Chain. Oh my god. Anyway, from Platinum Games. I don't care. We could play Platinum Dark Souls games. 3 together. Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> um, I think probably the biggest pre-order bonus that made me go, Ugh, but I still bought it anyway, was for Arkham City. Do you remember what the pre-order bonus for that game was? I don't. To be able to play as Catwoman. Oh. And playing as Catwoman like completes so much of the game. Because she has pivotal moments in the game where you switch back to her and she does stuff. So they just, like, took a bunch of the game out. Yep. That's pretty shitty. I was like, oh, man. I think that eventually got changed to not a pre-order bonus, but you just had to buy the game new. Like, it just came Mm. with a code. Yeah. There have just been many times. Sorry. I I didn't finish that game, but I think I had Catwoman when I played it. And I, like, got it as a gift. So I definitely didn't pre-order it. But uh, just when they clearly have made something and then they cut it out to as a pre-order bonus. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think of what was... Some... Yeah, like, if you are going to do pre-order bonuses, you should definitely stick to just, like, cosmetic stuff. Mm-hmm. And sure. it would be nice if you just didn't do them at all. That would be nice. Try... Like, I think the dumbest one that I can think of recently was for Dark Souls 2. Is it just gave you uh, six astral chain looks anime as hell? Um, That's part of why I want it. It's platinum but games. we could play a ga- other games. We're trying to do a channel about playing games, and your computer is like. I'm, tr- I'm trying to think of a way to say it without just being an asshole. Okay, but you know that Bayonetta is one of my favorite games. I don't know that because you've never said that, but now I, be- I believe you. Okay, but I've talked about it a lot, right? No. What? I talk- I've talked about it some, at least. Like, uh, maybe. Like, I've what- brought it up at least a couple times. Do you have a Bayonetta I really. Here? I have two, actually. Show I us. I have both of the Amiibos. Let us see them. I'd really love... I think it's Play Arts makes, like, an actual scale. Um, but that's, like, $300, which is more than I want to pay. Nice. Got little Bayonetta Robert's Amiibos. knickknack corner. Robert's knickknack corner. Um, uh, but for Dark Souls 2, they just gave you a bunch of shitty shields that you just had at the start of the game. 
See, Al Riot knows that I've said that Bayonetta was one of my favorite games. I mean, maybe. I, I believe you. I just don't have that... Like, I feel like if you would have said that, we would have talked about it a lot. And I, I guess it was one of those things where you said it and we were just talking about something else and kept going. Or maybe you yeah. said it to Fabulous Owl Riot IRL and I wasn't there. But I believe maybe it. So. What it is, is it's a very Robert thing. It is a very Robert thing. And Astral Chain is also by the same people who made it. We talked about it in a podcast. I can't remember what podcast. we. Unless is the one where we talked about God Hand and you literally just went Bayonetta is one of my favorite games and then we just kept talking about other shit. That I could see happening now because I'm like, we did talk about some character action games. Yeah. But we didn't go... Yeah, because I kept referring to them the way that Yahtzee does. Yeah, you called them spectacle fighters. Yeah. But yeah, we didn't like sit down and knuckle because I know I really... I have not played through either of them like beyond a couple like levels. Yeah. And I've wanted to, but I'm waiting for Evan to buy the double pack on Switch. It's great. It's fantastic. And I would love to stream those, but streaming on the Switch is a pain in the butt. You should just drive down here and hang out here for like a week and we can just do some local streaming. That would be fun. But uh, anyway. So yeah, pre-order bonuses. What were we talking about? Oh, your stupid Sonic opinion. Um, I mean, I feel like we've settled the fact that it's one of the best one. Sonic. It is the best Sonic game and it's just a great game in general. It's a matter of settled law in this court. What? Back me up, Al Riot. No. Back me up. I will revoke your mod privileges. Uh, but, um... I was really hoping that uh, Evan would be here, too, so that he would also jump on the bandwagon. But No, Al Riot didn't hear you. I don't know what statement The statement he was that Sonic Adventure 2 Battle is the best Sonic. Oh, no, Dervik's gonna go play it. No! Actually, you know what? Go play it, Dervik, and then come back and be like, it was a giant pile of butts. Hey, speaking of anime and Dark Soul things, have you looked at the game um, Code Vein? No, I've never heard of it. Ooh. It is an anime Dark Souls game that has been like in development for a while, and it's been shown at like, a couple of E3s, but it's coming out this year. Hmm. But Sounds interesting. It's supposed to be a from at least what people have said in playing, it is a bit easier than Dark Souls. It plays more like a character reaction-y game. Hmm. But it has, like, you die and respawn at checkpoints. And you have, like, a limited number of healing unless you, like, kill people and suck healing out of them. Well, that sounds pretty neat. But, yeah, I'm interested. Yeah. It's a Bandai Namco game. So hmm. They make the weeaboo shit. I guess it's not weeaboo for them. They're Japanese, so. But all right, we're, get away we'll, with we'll move on. You were wrong, but let's go to the next one. Okay. Um, I was really hoping more people would try to drop bits into this cup. I had all these poems ready. Yeah. Oh, man. I didn't write any poems. I would have had to do it on the fly. Um... Some of these now, at this point, are just, like, opinions that are mildly contentious. I had to work so hard just to get these even. Oh, did I drop too big of a bomb at the start of this? No, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah, did you have any others? No, that's just what I've spent no. really all week thinking about. I was trying to think of other things where I'm like, this! And I'm like, no, most people are also like, yeah, this. Yeah. Uh, well, I have, like, some weird opinions that i think are probably pretty different from that's, other people's opinions that's fine let's do it except that so one of mine is that i strongly prefer stylistic stylized graphics to realistic graphics all right like yeah, i tend to find realistic too. graphics kind of boring um but like if you show me a, a game that's just like vomiting color all over me i'm there i mean stylistic games also seem to normally age better yeah, that's certainly true. So, okay. Yeah, that I can't disagree with that one. I always prefer stuff to look different than So You Don't Go Outside. That's super realistic. Not if I can help it. 
We may disagree on Sonic, but staying inside is something we both love. When I when I was little, I used to have this dream of having a like a tunnel network that could basically just like swoop me to like all my relatives' house so we could hang out. And then as I got older, I'm like, that's stupid. But now that I've gotten older again, I'm like, I would love that if we, our houses had that because we live so far apart. So I'm like, I want to hang out with yeah. Robert and I don't ever want the sun to touch my skin. Boop. Or just Star Trek teleporters. No, fuck that shit. I don't want to be Transport. atomically disassembled. You put... watched the CGP Grey video, I take it? I have no idea what you're talking about. Oh, well, he's a fairly well-known YouTube guy who did one video about how if you use a star trek transporter you've definitely been killed yep i mean i've heard the thing is like you're not the set you're technically not the same person you are what the computer believes you should be and you've been reconstructed yeah so yeah i don't want the computer to take me apart at a molecular level and then try to reassemble me correctly but you could get around instantly that's fine I'm good for right. Unless it's something that had been around for like hundreds of years before I was born and I grew up in a society where that's okay. Yeah. I, if I it mean, was if introduced, you're living in Star Trek, that's true. If it is introduced tomorrow, I don't think by the time I am dead, I will have tried it. Fair enough. But that's fine because I'm going to be dead by next Thursday, so. No. All of, all of the lifeline cancer. Because Will already told me that the toothache that I have is probably a weird abscess infection that's growing into my brain and I'm going to die. That's not good. So. Well, I hope that's not true. Can they reassemble you differently? Like, change the eye color or hair? I don't know, man. Well, that would actually be a question Star for Trek? Robert. Um, I don't I feel like thing they went over? I don't think it's a thing that they've done in any of the shows where someone used the transporter to be changed, but there have been like shows where there are transporter accidents that changed someone. And I feel like it definitely would be within the rules of the Star Trek universe that you could alter the way that transporter technology works in order to do that. You just like hybridize a transporter and a replicator. Um, and then you'd use some Star Trek jibber jabber, and then it would it takes point two percent of your soul each time. That's a significant <laughs> amount. Yeah, that is a pretty significant amount. Like, oh my god, yeah, fuck that. I'm never gonna do that. Okay, but so here's what I'm saying is that um, both Captain Picard and Captain Sisko have used the transporter a lot and they've got hella soul so maybe but all right so what was what you was can't the... you can't tell me that Captain Picard doesn't have any soul left please do people get addicted to the feeling of being transported I don't know that's a question for Gene Roddenberry uh I think no is also the answer to that question <laughs> or at least like that is never something that has happened in any episode of Star Trek. Like, I don't think the transporter feels like anything. You just exist in one place and then you Are exist in another. Oh, Gene Roddenberry has a new show coming out? Well, it's not Gene Roddenberry. So the, the, the current Star Trek series, which I haven't watched, um, but they wrapped up their first season and I guess they're doing a thing where like each season is just completely different stories with different characters mm -hmm. so the next one is supposed to be captain picard so they brought back patrick stewart to like oh dang reclaim the role of captain picard and will develop a new story around him nice and okay. that that might be worth getting cbs all access for um maybe maybe i hate the thought of like buying a streaming service just for one show um, so is there anything else on CBS that's good not that I know of I mean there probably is something else that's good but that's the only thing I want to watch um, and like I didn't for the first season because 
the impression that I've got of the first season that is that is that it's a lot more like the J.J. Abrams movies, which you know that I have strong negative feelings about. Um, to you, they are what Sonic Adventure is to the rest of everyone else. There are what? Nothing. Don't worry about it. It was dumb. Sonic Adventure but yeah, too bad. So like, bad. Uh, it's great, but um, but yeah, they the the first season of Discovery sounded to me like it was just going to be kind of a a dumb action show set in the Star Trek universe. Um, how does your brain deal with that? How does it deal with what? With being transported? You got a lot of transporter questions here. We'll have I, to do a Star Trek podcast someday. I know that's what you want. I I just I don't know what I would do. That's fair. I would just be like, yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to do it this time, do it to you this time, but I had had the thought before that it would be fun to, like, one time instead of a movie, pick, like, I would pick, like, one or two episodes of Star Trek, and then you'd have to watch them and discuss them. I don't know how I would watch them. Do you not have Netflix? Oh, is it all on Netflix? All of it's on Netflix, except for Discovery. Okay. Yeah, that would definitely be disconcerting to exist in one place and then to exist somewhere else. But oh, he used then instead of then. Come on, fabulous. I feel like it's something you would get used to. There oh, are... He's, I see he corrected it. There are four lights, okay? Please. What? Lights? Deep, deep... Not a, not really that deep Star Trek reference, but famous Star Trek reference to a particular episode featuring Captain Jean-Luc Picard being interrogated by Cardassians, if I'm recalling correctly. And oh, I think it was four lights. Before they married Kanye. What? What Kanye? How does Kanye fit into all of this? I don't know. That was, I don't know. It... Oh, I see you corrected yourself. I just hadn't updated on my screen yet. Because what alien race did you say? The Cardassians? Oh, uh, yep. Cardassian, Kardashian. Yep, that was I it. See. That was all it was. It was dumb. I get it. They're pretty different. Are they? They're both pretty and human. Fair point. Thank you, Fabulous Owl Riot. I was uh, too caught up in the star trek forest to see the kardashian joke Tre- trees there, yep i was really hoping the forest for the trees ah what can you have keyframes lower than zero i just i'm looking at the number and it has just slowly gone up we've gone from 0.5 percent drop frames to one percent drop frames are the keyframes the same as like iframes in a normal streaming thing iframes the only thing i know about iframes are in fighting games okay so like when you're streaming a video like Mm -hmm. the way that it's different from like if you watch a video on a dvd it's a series of pictures that are played in order right yep but when you're streaming a video the way that the streaming process works is it goes through those series of pictures and will will do something like take one and then cut three take one and then cut three and then it has an algorithm which it Uh, uses to move between those scenes that it took and it predicts what comes between them so the frames that it keeps are called iframes and then the frames that the algorithm makes up are called p frames so i guess my question was like are keyframes that is the way that twitch streaming works is that your camera captures something keyframes are sent to Twitch and then Twitch has a predictive algorithm on the end user's side to reduce the amount of data that they have to download so they're getting the keyframes which are then predicted between to create the illusion of motion on the video gotcha well, I guess that's I... at least my guess about what that was in which case if that was true though then like you couldn't possibly have zero keyframes because this is keyframe interval too high and it's at zero so Mm. does that mean i can make it negative one maybe i don't know 
Also, was I right, Dervik, about there being four lights? Did I remember the reference correctly? Because the Cardassian if, wants him to say there are five, right? And there are only four. I want to make sure that I'm living up to my Star Trek street cred. I'm going to be disappointed in myself if I got the numbers wrong. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Maybe I need to set it to two. Hmm. That's what a lot of people are saying. I'll give that a try. I don't think I can change it right now while it's going. I mean, the stream looks fine on my TV at least, so hopefully it's fine. And yeah, yeah. give I that a shot next time. Don't know if the quality is something that is driving people away, aside from mm -hmm. our weebish personalities. Anyway, so what was this in relation to <laughs> before we started going down the Star Trek road? What was your weird opinion this time? I don't even remember. Oh it. my god, there are three lights now. Um, <laughs> we're talking about Bayonetta, right? What? Because do we go from yeah, Bayonetta we're to this? Yeah, we talking about Bayonetta and then Astral. Well, we were talking about Astral Chain and Bayonetta. Were we still uh, talking we... about pre-orders? I think somehow we got onto the issue of transporters. Oh, oh I remember I didn't what want it was. To go outside. You had said you wanted the like tube that could take you to other people's houses, and I said transporters. And yep, then we went there we go. Graphics. We're rewinding it back. Graphics. graphics. Okay, so yes. what is your next opinion? My next opinion? Yeah, what was... Um, so, like, I really love turn-based combat. Okay. Um, and I know a lot of people don't. But I really, really hate the mechanics that have been added to try and spice it up over the year, over the years, like active time battle or like if you have to push a button prompt right when you hit the enemy. Okay. Uh, yeah. I, I, I guess it's, I like those. I think. Um, like the. Because I'm not necessarily a huge fan of turn-based combat where it's purely dice rolls and stuff like that because it just feels like I don't get to do anything. The Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga, I think, is probably the best example of turn-based combat that I can think of. Yeah. And it is, when it is not your turn, like when it is the attacker's turn, like A and B control Mario and Luigi separately, you basically have a chance to dodge attacks by playing minigames. So you can, like, perfectly get through fights. Yeah. Yeah. And then there'll be things where when you're attacking someone, you can do a normal attack where it just does it, but if you do a special attack, you need to like hit the A button in time with prompts, and then you'll do like a big attack. Yeah. I, I think I prefer that over just like straight hit. Okay, your turn. Oh, now that your turn. I didn't get to... Oh, I'm dead. Yeah. I guess like I... Um, part of the reason that I really like turn-based games is because i like to watch tv and play games at the same time because my brain just needs a lot of stimulus um and so like Does if it? you're <laughs> if you're always talking about how anxious stimulus. you are maybe you need less stimulation that's certainly possible but um i'm not inclined to do anything about it because i I'm a like creature to of do habit. all the yeah yep Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Alright, fair enough. I will suffer interminably before I change my ways. Do you like real time with pause? Uh not really. Wait, do you just mean like real time combat in general? Well like no, I think there's like a, I think there's I don't think I've played any games that use this system. But I want to say it's Divinity that does this, or at least games in that genre, where, like, the game kind of moves in real time, but you can pause the game in order to set a lot of movement commands. Okay, I think, well, I think you're, well, are you talking about, like, Divinity Original Sin? Yeah, which, again, I haven't played. Yeah, because, like, what Dervik has it perfectly right is, I think the game you're thinking of is Pillars okay. of Eternity. Yeah. Where it's a real time game where you pause it and then you tell everyone to do stuff. Whereas Divinity, it's 
it's completely turn-based. At least Original Sin is. There's a bunch of Divinity games. I don't know if the early ones are turn-based. Yeah. Yeah, no, I just want... I really want to just, like, everyone takes turns hitting each other. For for me, Final Fantasy X was, like, the best turn-based game ever in terms of the way the mechanics of that game worked. Because, like... I don't know if that's... I don't know if I'd call that necessarily turn-based. Why not? Oh, wait, sorry. I was thinking of 12. Yeah. So I was like, the me- it's not about turns, it's about your speed because the meters fill up and then that's when you can yeah keep that's the active turn bat or the active time battle system yeah okay that sorry. i don't like because 10 um, i 10 was a dumb game i loved 10 i know we talked about it in high school blitzball is 10, stupid i hate blitzball blitzball's Yay. awful uh, <laughs> i agree with you there um but like 10 was the final fantasy 10 was the first game where i ever tried where I ever like started to understand the way that you would use like buff moves and healing mechanics. And so it was like a game that taught me a lot about like how much fun it can be to have a character who's there to like buff other characters or have a character who's like a dedicated healer. And I don't know why that's fun for me, but it, it was, I really liked that. And so I really enjoyed that element of turn-based games and like that element doesn't feel enhanced to me by like an active time battle system where like suddenly i'm having to rush around to if i'm like oh oh, go ahead i'm just rambling if i was going to play a turn-based game i'd want to be more of like a tactics based game Hmm. something like divinity or xcom where if it's literally if it's just like I do like uh, Kingdom, not Kingdom, what am I talking about? I do like Dragon Quest Eleven. Yeah. Where it's just lines of people shooting at each other with sword muskets. Mm-hmm. But it does, that game did get very boring to me, in combat at least. The world was what saved it, what I kept playing it for. But games where like they take elevation into account and where you can stack certain things together or when it's not your turn you can like sneak up behind someone those are the turn-based games i can tolerate but for the most part when it's like revolutionary accident revolutionary war because america didn't play by the rules and that's why we won but um yeah when it's just this is the zero punctuation quote podcast is when it's just two groups of people taking turns to twat each other on the head with sticks that to me is kind of boring yeah but it definitely can be like i feel like there's games that do better versions of it and games that do worse versions of it like in final fantasy 10 there was a lot that you could do to kind of like learn the ways that certain enemies worked learn like the buff spells that you could use that would help deal with them that kind of thing so there was like a level of knowledge that was fun and i guess after you figure out here's the buttons that you hit to beat that enemy then it could become pretty repetitive That's a, yeah, it was like you're saying the exact same thing it was like yeah once you figured it out then you know oh i just need to do this 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 and then i've won yeah every time i mean as i mentioned earlier like a big part of why i like those games is because i like to watch tv while i play games and like if you have a game like that where the grinding is something where you're just hitting the right buttons in the right order, that's that's like a great thing to play while you're watching TV. I don't know. I, I used to sort of be like that when I was younger and played my Game Boy Advance, but like now when I play a game, I want the game to have my full attention. Yeah. And just being full attention on, all right, here we go, okay, all my turns are done, good. But with a tactics based one where there's a lot more things that can happen during the turn base then i'm way more on board have you played the game uh tides of numenera Uh uh-uh it's a game i want to play but at the same time like i hear it's good but mm, and it's not very good but it's a game where you can get through the whole game by like instead of fighting there's options to just like do speech checks through a fight hmm Like, you can just take turns to be like, yo, stop fighting so I can convince you to not fight me. And then that's what the mini fight becomes between those characters. 
Yeah. So it's you convincing that person to not attack you without it being like you have a 10% chance to just be like, don't fight me. And then they'll be like, no. And now this character is double mad at you. It's like you can talk to them and have a conversation. Yeah. And I was like, that's kind of cool. One other game that I love, but you hate okay. where you oh. can use conversation to, to end battles. I mean, I don't hate Undertale. Okay. I said you, that. You always seem very combative anytime. Oh, I, I just think it's overrated. That. Yeah. But I enjoyed playing it. But no, it's it's. I think it's overrated for what it is. But I like it a lot. I know, but you are also a crazy person who loves Sonic. I don't love Sonic. Nope, I literally love... only love Sonic Adventure Two best. So you love Sonic. You have if you love a little bit, you love all of it. Okay. Is, is Dermic? Would you say that uh, Newman Era is worth getting? I haven't bought it. I just got to play a little bit of it at a friend's house and I was like mm. because I am a big safety baby and if I can play through a whole game without killing someone I will do it because I love the world is really good that's cool is when I play a game killing people is always the most boring thing you can do in a video game to me is if I can play a game where I get to see the aftermath of having played through an area without killing someone and they're like damn it what happened or yeah. if i get to make everyone my friend and then the world gets to be better i'm also a big fan of that <laughs> but so when i heard about numenera where it's like you can just talk through the whole game i'm like oh that's my thing but then i heard it's also just kind of poorly paced mm. but all right so uh what other what other contentious opinions do you have oh man we're working our way through my list I mean, we've been doing... This is the longest our podcast has gone, so this is good. Yeah. We're getting our viewership up, and hopefully someone will sub or drop some sweet bits in our bucket. Oh, here's 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 one. All right. Um, I think that the ink ribbon save mechanic from the old Resident Evil games is a really cool mechanic, and I'd really like to see more games play around with that idea. I mean, we, we talked about that already for yeah. a while. Yeah, and I I agree with you. I think it's somewhat good. I I don't think that should be like a default game experience. I think that should be like a cool extra mode. Yeah. Sort okay, of, I'm remembering our conversation because we were talking about Resident Evil Two. They get rid of the ink ribbons in the normal difficulty, but then you can play like classic difficulty, which adds them back in. Hmm. And I think that's really good because, I don't know, just nowadays, like the whole point of the ink ribbon system then was to get them to play your game for as long as you could at a period of time. Hmm. So that way you can just save and quit all the time. But now we have so much shit going on. It's like, oh, I need to, like, I've had instances sort of happen while playing Kingdom Come Deliverance, which I love that game and I recommend it to anyone. Is, uh, before they added it actually no the thing i'm thinking was fallout 4 survival mode but they add together i promise is both games have when you play either default or the special version of it a survival mode for four and then just normal version for kingdom Home deliverance you can't save whenever you want and sometimes you're like out and you're like oh i need to quit like let's say this is not hypothetical this happened to me is i i was really sick with the stomach flu and i had to be in the bathroom I wanted to stop playing it, but I couldn't leave it paused <laughs> because it was a lightning storm, and if I lost power, I would have lost hours. Mm. So I I played through and vomited into a garbage can that was next to me. Ugh. But both games have since added features where it just saves when you quit. So gotcha. I wouldn't... There needs to be something, I think, like that if you want to have a limited save system because mm. aside from that, Kingdom Come Deliverance has... You can save in any owned bed, which there are not many, like where you know about right away, or if you rent an inn, or you drink this thing called Save Your Schnapps. That's what you save. Gotcha. And it's cool because it does force you to kind of play more carefully. So, one, you're not just like, oh, look at all these pockets I can pick. Because if yeah. you fuck up and they catch you, there's way more of a, conf like a consequence. 
but yeah i guess that that's why i like the system or at least the idea of the system is just like i know that i abuse the shit out of saves and games mm -hmm. and um like it's perfectly valid to say well robert just stop abusing the saves but, but you've already said you're there, a I'll creature forget. of massive yeah. addiction that is true one game that ended up being not a very good game but it had a very interesting saving mechanic i don't remember the name of the game but it was a game that was like a top-down isometric like horror it was made an rpg maker to be honest but you're this detective trying to find these kids locked in different houses of murderers and how the game worked is every time you saved your character lit a cigarette and smoked it and what would happen is if you saved a whole bunch too soon your character would smoke a bunch of cigarettes and would start coughing and that could give away your position mm. so it encouraged you to stop save scumming because i think like if you died it would reset that coughing counter yeah so it would just i don't know how much of a penalty it was because i remember it was a game that came out then people were like this game's only interesting mechanic is this <laughs> so i don't know if it's a, a cool mechanic though yeah it's very interesting is if it's good if you're going to have something like a limited save like ink ribbons i think you also need to have the save on exit feature and for mm -hmm. both of the games i was talking about uh, uh fallout 4 survival mode and kingdom come is your exit save is not a save you can load so you can't like just walk 10 feet save quit exit reload the game and scum it that way it's, yeah it's a save that can only be loaded when you start the game so hmm. it's still not scummable really but i don't know i would agree with that then that's a that's a good measure to have in place just with all the shit people have going on nowadays all right yeah what else you got oh man i uh i think i only have one more yeah it's fine and it's another one we've talked about before um but my opinion is that if from software doesn't immediately discontinue whatever projects they're working on and start production on a new lost kingdoms game they're fools okay that uh, is the, <laughs> that was a, <laughs> i don't know if there's like an like what the line is between contentious and dumb seems like a mean word but like no why would they do oh, that yeah. <laughs> i did write down one dumber one well uh -oh. they do that because it would be awesome but like that it wouldn't make any business sense at all they there no one even knows what game you're talking about i do D do you even yes maybe you do games. maybe you don't but no one else does and they they unless you're going to buy like 12 million copies of this game to keep from software afloat i might it makes more sense for them to sort of make games closer to okay what... but look if if you build it they will come if you make last kingdoms the new one people will see how cool it is and they'll want to buy it i mean you might be right there might be this hidden ghost audience that's like i want to play this game isn't it cards it's cards right there's cards in it yeah it's yeah. like a hack and slash game where your attacks change based on what card you drew okay so yeah it's, it's awesome. like they're I don't know. fabulous all right be up for a new one why are there you need go. to go to bed no 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 stay up and defend me but uh it is i don't know it's they would be fools to do the thing you're talking about from a very strong business perspective because people uh, are all be fools not to though. are already losing their shit over what elden ring is going to be okay but from an artistic integrity standpoint they would be fools not to okay Okay, you want my dumbest? I dumbest do want one? your dumbest one. I think that every game, every game, every game should have a screen-sized enemy who says "woo hoo hoo." 
Oh, okay. Well, this has been Good Gaming with Bad People podcast. <laughs> okay, podcasts with bad people. Uh, I'm so sorry, CJ. I just don't. I'm so afraid that is going to be something associated with this channel. I that's I definitely intend to make that a channel meme, and no. there's nothing you can do to stop me. It's just that and dinner is ready. Yeah. That was such a bad enemy design. In terms of audio, and really kind of everything, that was just a bad character for that style of game. I loved it. I mean, did you actually like playing against it, or you just loved that I was like, this is terrible? I didn't, it, it, it like genuinely did not bother me, and I okay. did get an in, incredible kick out of how awful you found it. Yeah, it was, it was bad. That was, it was just an enemy that was too big. With yeah. hit, with hit boxes that like were not like I couldn't tell what was hitting, what yeah, and it was just uh, and then it's, and because they were always in like groups of a hundred, there'd just be the Ooh, just all over slightly syncopated. That was an I audible it nightmare. So much. Uh uh, well, I will continue to remind you of it. I want to um, die. No. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think. I can't really think of any that would be like, this is how I feel by myself. Or a small minority, because I'm... I have my fingers on the pulse of all things culture. So yeah. I, this I, was a hard one to like think of things for i was hoping we'd get more stuff from like how dervic was like pre-orders are dumb i'm like that's a good one that's a good one but it, it, we got derailed by sonic and transporter talk i you know what though i was thrilled to get the chance to talk about star trek well i mean as long as long as you're happy i guess yeah. i was trying to think Cause like I want to say like my opinion is that motion controls and games are largely stupid, but I feel that's the way a lot of gamers feel. Yeah, that's not a super contentious. I guess I, I don't think they've ever been done well. I feel like you, they've probably been done all right. I think you could maybe make a fun game that used them, but I don't think it's been done yet. I think I guess another yeah. one would be if VR does not start moving towards having some sort of haptic feedback, VR as a medium is going to die. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I I've never actually tried a VR, so I feel like I can't really say anything about it, you know, like we had a friend bring his computer rig in VR. We got to play it, and it was cool. The one thing that sucked is I couldn't do it with my glasses on. Mm. And, like, the like correction of sight wasn't enough to be, like, crystal clear, so it was still sort of blurry. Is gotcha. that the, With nothing, and this goes back to motion controls, having nothing to stop you or give resistance when you're just flailing wildly... Yeah. ...is, like, it creates a bigger disconnect to me than if I was just sitting on my butt playing with a controller. Yeah. I I feel like from my very limited understanding of the VR medium, it seems like a genre or it seems like a medium where certain genres just wouldn't work very well. But at the same time, I think like while you maybe couldn't build a a game that works really well where like you're walking around in it maybe you could build a game where like you're piloting a mech and so you still use like a normal controller but you have the vr headset on and it feels like you're in the cockpit of a mech and yeah. like there's already a bunch of games bullshit. like that where it's just you do that like yeah i can't see the genre of a fighting game ever working mm. just because yeah. like it's like if you're trying to do a boxing game oh what are you what are you grinning at I was just, I, I, it reminded me of that angry video game nerd video where he plays that attachment that was supposed to be for like fighting games where it's like a little ring that you put on the floor and you're supposed to punch over it. 
and like the juxtaposition between the commercials and how stupid it looked. Striking Vipers. Why does that name sound super familiar? I have not seen Striking Vipers. That name sounds super familiar. Nope. Oh, that's the that was the episode of Black Mirror. Oh. Yeah, but the, the, don't they like get like mentally transported into? Yeah, they get. Like yeah, unless VR goes the other way and it literally dopamines you into a new realm of reality, then a fighting game would work. Hmm. But like a like a boxing game where you're playing with a controller, you, like you don't have individual control over limbs. So like if you get hooked in the head too hard, your avatar is gonna like bend down and can't do stuff. But forcing player head movement like that without forcing the rest of their body will just make them vomit. Mm. so you would have to it would other yeah so i don't i don't really know what's going to go on we just need to get that peripheral we talked about where it steals your blood every time you get punched and then you win when your opponent has passed out from blood loss i don't want that i don't want that why, why not what are you afraid of them taking want, all of your blood. I want my blood to stay in my body. You get your blood back after the match is over. Mm. You just get to they just mm -mm. pour it right back into your mouth. Mm. Mm -mm. Because the blood, the blood gets quickly back into the veins via the stomach. Just keep my blood in there. Then you also get to drink your opponent's blood. So if you lose, then it doesn't get put back into your body. Yeah, because you're weak. But remember, they don't take enough blood from you to kill you, just enough for you to pass out. Yeah. Yeah, I've not seen that episode. I have actually not watched really any Black Mirror. Yeah, I haven't. I only saw one episode of it, um, which I wasn't all that into. But, Eat um... cookies. <laughs> Eat cookie. Cookies tend to help a lot of things. Yeah. I think, like... The, when I look at the future, I feel so hopeless already that I like don't need to see a TV show that's all about like all the ways that technology could fuck things up. It just sounds like it would depress me more than I am already. Yeah, that's about how I feel as well. I'd rather watch Star Trek again, as I often do, and see a hopeful vision of the future where everything is ruled by a sh shadow cabal that is evil the federation ah yep they're all right nope, they're evil they they picked jean-luc picard to captain their flagship yeah would an evil people do that yes they would to get them to fall in line a world government is what i want actually I'm tired of all these separate countries. Oh no! I... We're getting into now. We're getting back to controversial opinions. opinions. <laughs> That's all we took is to bring it to Star Trek. I want humanity to all be one. I don't think that's so wrong. No, now we're getting into Evangelion. Not that one. That's a little bit more one that I wanted he to be. Because wasn't that the fourth impact? Because uh, I remember when I was on the yeah. wiki reading it, it, like there was a jump, or wait, no, that's the third impact. Yeah. I What's think it's the, the second third. impact? So I think the second is the one that like creates the the one that happens before the series is the second. Oh, then what's the first impact? So I think the first is when the like alien things originally came to Earth. Oh, okay. Because uh, I thought we I talked and you said the first that. impact was when it destroyed humanity. So that way when it went to third, I was like, what happened in the middle? Yeah, I think I misspoke there. Also, like, I, don't, I love Evangelion. I think I understand somewhere between 75 and 90% of it. Nice. So, like, like, I need to watch it at least six more times. Now, Dervik, when you say Equilibrium, do you mean, like, the movie Equilibrium? Or just the idea of balance in general? 
was there a world government in equilibrium i don't know that's why i was thinking i i thought i guess it makes sense that there would be so don't really talk about any government outside of like where they are yeah they just say the government you band. just assume that it's like that everywhere because I don't remember anyone saying, like, is what's he called? The father? Like, the head dude? So, that sounds like right, yeah. Saying he, yeah, like, they always refer to him as father, right? Yeah, like, they didn't refer to him as father of the world. They were just, like... But I also don't want equilibrium to happen, because I don't want people to know the power of the gun katas. I'd be too scared. Yeah, I don't want to get my feelings taken away. But once you had your feelings taken away, you wouldn't care. That's true. Then you wouldn't be so anxious all the time. That would be nice. And then we could go up on cherry pickers. Yeah, but I would then miss out on the beauty of the cherry picker experience as well. Okay, so you've admitted you that there's You can't have beauty. the highs without the lows. So we're going to get in a cherry picker to have more beauty happen? Mm. That's what you just said. There's beauty in well, it. Well, I'm not saying that there isn't beauty in it. I'm... I'm saying that for me, the terror outweighs the beauty. So the idea that you could get me up in the cherry picker by getting rid of the terror is like, that's true. But then what are you getting once you're at the top? Cherries. Okay, which I can't appreciate if I have no emotions. But like you can, your body can appreciate the caloric and uh, nutritional intake of the cherries. Or my body can be irritated about what an inefficient method we went about getting sustenance. Why did we get a cherry picker and then go find cherry trees and then go up to the cherries in the cherry picker when we could have just got food bar? Because food food bar is not real. You're being ridiculous. Do they not? What do they eat in Equilibrium? They the when they, the only food I remember seeing them eat is the <laughs> they taste better that way. Um, the kid was eating cereal for sure. The son, yeah, was he eating it? And then he like looks up at his dad, and then his the Christian Bale pours a bowl of cereal and is like, Ugh. and I was like, that's weird. Do you remember what cereal they were eating? I was don't. Cornflakes. Oh, was it cornflakes? I would. I was just hoping it was. So they, they were playing up on the legacy of Kellogg's, yeah. All right, so uh, do we have any more opinions or anything? No, I don't think so. All I right. dropped my dumbest opinions on you, and you groaned a lot, but survived. So I barely survived. But uh, in the end, we got we got Dervid come back. We got him VIP status. We got another yeah. sub. So this was rather and rather successful. Good. Yeah. We have... And we talked about a great movie. I mean, Equilibrium's pretty good. Um, we have a long way to go before reaching partner. We'll get there. The estimate is about three to five years. And Will and Robert will have to carry on without me. No. After I cart whip. I have to stop TOS. I can't make those jokes. Ah. But anyway, so uh, we'll pick up. Well, actually, before we close, we got to figure out what we're doing next week. Yeah. So, uh, any movies on the that on your mind that you were like, hey? I had a couple that I was thinking of. All um, right. I don't know if you'll necessarily love them, um, but you know, I'll. Okay. So, first idea. Um, would you want to watch Christine? I mean, I've seen it. You've seen it? Oh, okay. I saw it like a while ago. I, did, I honestly didn't think it was that great. Yeah. But I'm also, I'm honestly not a huge, I don't think Stephen King is a bad writer at all, but honestly, I'm not a huge fan it's of his not stuff. Too okay. Well, I wrote down a couple of other ideas. Yeah, I'd love to um, hear them. You've picked pretty there's good. There's two that I haven't seen before. Uh, one is a sci-fi movie, one is a spoopy movie, but I've heard they're both excellent. Okay. So, uh, Hereditary is the spoopy movie. I I've have seen that one. Really good. You've seen it? Yeah. Okay. And then Ex Machina is the sci-fi movie. I've seen that one. 
And then during our conversation, when you said you'd never seen Alien, I wrote down Alien. But uh, you sound like you're not that interested in watching Alien. Of all of those, I'd be definitely up for watching Alien. Ex Machina, it was all right. I saw it. And then Hereditary, I didn't really enjoy. But once again, I'm not a fan of spooky movies. And it doesn't really yeah. do anything to me that's special. But Alien is such a seminal yeah. thing. So like, I'd be like, okay. I had one other that I've written down, which I know you've already seen. Okay. But which I do think we could have a great conversation is about. Red which is Ghost in the Shell. Oh, I have not seen Ghost in the Shell. You haven't seen Ghost in the Shell? No, it's another thing that like. That you... seems crazy to me. Okay, do you want to watch Ghost in the Shell? Uh, I'd like to take a break from anime for this week. All right. But I'd be up for watching it in the. But it's another thing where I've had. It's such. Yeah, Derek, we haven't seen Alien. It was just. It's a thing that I've seen so much of it that watching it, I'd be like, yep, it was as good as people say. Like, I don't really know what I'd really get out of it because I've seen. I mean, I felt I thought that would be what happened when I went to watch Blade Runner and then it was an awesome movie and I really loved it. But so. you are, I don't, I, don't know. I don't know, I'm more, I don't, know, I don't want to say jaded, but like dead on the inside. I don't react to things. I'd say as much as you, I'd see it and just be like, OK, that was fine. I mean, I think we just react to different things. Like, as you probably recall, I didn't really react very much to Old Boy. Like, or at least not like the big things in Old Boy. Just like, uh, oh man, Urbicated Blade Runner. What? Oh dang. But like, that's what I was saying. That's a movie. Uh... Mm, okay, let's look at some of these. Have you seen Apocalypse Now? Yeah. Okay. Trying to look and see. Have you seen Taxi Driver? Robert De Niro? Uh -uh. Sorry, you cut out there. I have not seen Taxi Driver. That's pretty good. Have you seen uh, Pulp Fiction? Mm -mm. Oh my goodness. Uh, I'm trying to look at genres of stuff we haven't really looked at yet. Seeing a bunch of mobster movies. Derek found Blade Runner very boring. Yep, that's that's understandable. I can see things doing a bit. I'm trying to think of maybe a movie we both haven't seen yet. Uh, Do you want to watch Shin Godzilla? I think I pitched this once before, but I still want to watch it. Uh, uh, I don't like to me that isn't. I don't. I just, I'm not a fan of like kaiju stuff, so I feel like I'd be like, "Yep." I don't know. I'm trying. What are some other? Oh, on a side note, are you at all into Lupin the Third? Like, do you know anything about that? I couldn't hear what you said. Oh, sorry. I was gonna say, or just kind of as a side note, really quick. Have you seen? Like, are you at all into Lupin the Third? I barely know anything about. I know I recognize the characters, like it's, but I don't know much about like the show slash movies. I mean, just he it's always just serialized. Like ah, oh, he's thief in this thing. Is yeah. uh, they're doing the first like CG animated film for it in Japan, and they released a trailer hmm. for it, and it actually looks really good. Huh. Uh, let's see. How much are you into like? like noir films i don't think that i've seen many but i tend to at the very least like the noir aesthetic i'd be interested in watching a good noir film have you seen chinatown with jack nicholson mm -mm. oh wait damn it i was gonna say it's been so long that i've forgotten most of it but i remember years and years and years ago watching the movie L.A. Confidential, which is the movie L.A. Noir is based off of really heavily. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, yeah, I'm just going through. Have you seen A Clockwork Orange? Yes. Okay. I actually thought about pitching that once, but then decided against it. I think I picked a different movie that time. Hmm. If anyone in the, in the 
chat has any suggestions. Uh, so I'm trying to think, because I think Aliens would just end up being a conversation very similar to what we just had in Blade Runner, where it's a very good movie, and a bunch of other movies have picked from it. Oh, have Maybe. you seen Silence of the Lambs? Yeah. Damn it. <laughs> I'm trying to go through, like, what are some, like... I was about to suggest uh, Woody... Ha uh, uh, not Woody Harrelson, uh... Oh my goodness, the guy who did Ann, Anna, Annie Hall. What's his name? Oh, Woody Allen? Woody Allen, but then I'm just like, mm, I don't really want to talk about Woody Allen. You said you haven't seen Indiana Jones. That's true. But we just did... I just did a... Harrison Ford movie. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I'm going to IMDb, the 100 greatest movies of all time. So, number one, have you seen The Godfather? I haven't, actually. Oh, shit, really? Yeah. That movie's really good. Holy shit, I don't think I've seen The Shawshank Redemption all the way through. Yeah. Schindler's List. We could list. do that, but then you'd have... Oh, wait, no, I'm thinking of... I don't know, I always confuse that with Green Mile, but it's not Green Mile. No, it is definitely not Green Mile. <laughs> Maltese Falcon. I have not seen. That is an old movie. I, I'd be up for watching the Maltese Falcon. That's a that's a much older movie than anything we've looked at. Yeah. And we could just... All right. Let me just... Oh, how old is that movie? I think that movie's like... Yeah, I was right. It's from the 40s. Yeah. That's a Humphrey Brogard film pretty old all right so you so you up for that one sure all right we're gonna watch a really old detective movie we're well, not a detective movie old like film noir thriller movie i'd also be down for watching is maltese falcon hitchcock i don't think so i'll be up for watching some no it is a uh, john john huston for watching a Hitchcock. Yeah. Did Hitchcock do any noir movies? I think I've seen... Um... Ha, sweet, no. Wait, what? I'm not sure what Dervik is saying that to. I think I've seen The Birds, and then I've seen um, Psycho. That's all the Hitchcock I've seen. I've seen a lot of Robert... I've seen a lot of Robert... Hitch Wait, is it Robert Hitchcock? Yeah, Rear Window is really good. I've seen a lot of Hitchcock Presents, which hmm. was like his TV show. Yeah. And a bunch of those are good. Uh, so I confuse some of his things with movies because I don't remember which movie. I've seen Vertigo. Hmm. Oh, we're getting on this thing. It's a movie I haven't seen, but I heard it's very good. It's like a modern spin on a noir movie. It's called Brick. I think I've actually seen it, but yeah. I did like it. Oh, okay. Rope? Dervik says watch Rear Window. Wait, Rope or Rear Window? He says Rear Window is good. Rope, watch that one. Does, is, Rope, is Rope a Hitchcock movie or is that a Rear Window thing? Nope, it's, uh, it's a Hitchcock movie. Ah, Jimmy Stewart! I can talk like Jimmy Stewart! <laughs> Oh man! I'll... How long do you think you can do your Jimmy Stewart impression for? Whole podcast? I don't think the whole podcast. I don't. I would be up for. I have not seen that movie. I've never heard of it. All right. Okay, we're, we're gonna watch a Hitchcock movie. We're gonna watch Rope. Sounds good. All right. Yeah. Oh god, I'm trying to do it, but with having my headphones on, I know it's gonna sound terrible. So I'll practice. You know, you tell me we're gonna we're gonna do it it's gonna be great no that's bad i apologize to everyone that was great um uh okay so <laughs> on the video game side of things because i don't I was like, if we can keep a theme between rope and this because i don't even know what rope is about yeah it's a complete mystery to us 
but we'll have fun, I'm sure. Um, do you have any ideas for the other one? Because you normally bring a list of stuff. I had written one down, which was just um, things that you'd like to see uh, in more games that you've seen like maybe only once or twice before. So that could be mechanics, but it could also be like settings or other things that, that like yeah that sounds yeah. good cool awesome so, so things you would like to see more games do or yeah. at least more games try exactly so we have we're gonna watch rope and then talk about things we liked in games that we want to see in more games i'm not sure what to call that but i need to think of a shorter snappier title to put in the title for the yeah thing because that's going to be really long or we could go the opposite way just make it really long but no, there's a character limit what's the what's the character limit though how close are we to it can we really fill that bad boy up uh oh goodness i'm clicking on everything let me see because where we are right now we have 47 more characters What's the total? Is it like a hundred? I, I don't know. I'd have to uh, delete everything. That would mess up what's happening right now. Pay attention to how it's filmed. Rope is unique for its time. Okay. Hmm. I'm intrigued. I, I do really like Hitchcock stuff. All right, cool. I feel cool. like I was too young to appreciate them when I saw them before. So I'm excited like I feel like I give movies a lot more chances now than I used to and I'm excited to watch a Hitchcock movie with a more open mind I agree but alright so we got that all worked out and I want to say thank you to everyone who stopped by if I feel like we're yeah. done did you have anything else you wanted to say Rob? no I don't think so I think we had a great stream great podcast it was a lot of fun yeah we had above three viewers the whole time so that's going to help our time a bunch Excellent. We're edging a little closer every day to that magical 75. Oh my god, that's going to take so We're long. We're all about edging here at Good Gaming with Bad People. So. Well, thank you very much, Dervik. And Just completely ignoring my bad joke. It's probably the right no, call. I mean, I wasn't ignoring it. I heard it and responded accordingly. <laughs> I'd let it hit me and wash, wash over me and on the inside yeah. die a little bit. But. Yeah. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow in the morning when Plane Kingdom come deliverance, nobody cares. I don't think I've had anyone <laughs> stop by really in the morning for like the past week. <laughs> yeah. So my parents popped by a couple times. That was nice. Uh, but we would normally would play Fallout New Vegas tomorrow. But instead, just to take a break because we finished that last DLC, is we're going to play Slay the Spire. I've never played it. I have very tertiary knowledge of it but will has played it for almost like 20 hours so he is gonna sit in the back seat and tell me all the shit i've done wrong well that'll be fun and we invite everyone to come uh hang out and tell me how dumb i am at cards because i was not very good at hearthstone uh it's pretty good at gwent so and i've never really played any other card games so i don't have much of experience so it will probably be stupid but who knows? Maybe that's where we'll land our whales. And then Saturday we're doing more beat 'em ups, right? We are. We're going to be doing uh, the River City River Underground City Ransom. River City Underground. Ransom Underground. I'm really yeah. excited to play that. I'm excited too. I think it's a better game than what we were playing last time. So. Which was it was a fun game. When I after we like the next day, I played some more and was astounded at how much better it was offline. I think the online was pretty poorly optimized. What do you mean? Like what was different? Like I don't know, like so maybe it was on maybe it looked all right on your end since you were hosting, but like the controls when I was playing online with you felt like really like... unresponsive a lot of the time. Mm, yeah, I and wasn't And when I went to issue. play Okay, yeah, when I went to play offline it was like night and day gotcha okay. i also realized i think 
the reason that we weren't getting the story was because I was playing one of the DLC characters. Huh. I tried playing through the single player as both the DLC and one of the not DLC characters and uh, only got the narrative while playing as the non DLC characters. Well, I appreciate you giving me the worst experience possible for that game. Oh. I got no story and just endlessly woohooed. <laughs> well, I it would I think it could be fun to play again. Yeah, I would definitely be up for playing it. We're gonna need something to do the whole next week while there all those nerds are in the woods. Yeah. I'd be up for playing more of it. Yeah. Especially now that I have more moves. <laughs> It's not just the garbage starting character. Well, I'm glad you're ready to get wooed again. <sighs> but all right, so we'll end here for real, we promise. So, yeah. bye. Bye. <laughs>